So, what have you been doing this week, Steve? Well, um, I'll tell you what, at the beginning of the week I was, um, incredibly annoyed by Carl. Why? Um, no, uh, well, no, because you, I remember you had a little discussion with Carl a while back saying that, um, you thought he was lazy at times. Yeah. And, you know, you had various criticisms of yeah, his, yeah, his, yeah, his work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got a call from him, he said, uh, oh yeah, I should have told you, um, I had a phone call, someone said that they were trying to get hold of Steve Merchant to offer him some lucrative voiceover work. Now you know- That is money time. for old It's money rope. for rope. It That's about, you're in there for about twenty minutes and it's thousands of pounds. If there are children listening who are still at school, they should definitely, when the careers guy says, what do you want to do? Try and get voiceover, voiceover work. work. Just become a voiceover artist. It's money for old rope. Yeah. So I can't believe my luck because yeah. you know I love money for old rope. Yeah. And um, I said, well, what was the information? He said, oh, oh, I don't know. I deleted the message. It was on his answer. And he deleted the message. I said, right, when did the message come? He said, last week. So he took a week to tell me Why? that he had deleted the message. Why? Just because it wasn't for you? I mean, I don't know how selfish that is, Carl. Is that, no, what happened is, right? I got back a holiday. Mm. I was at home. Yeah. So I called up my voicemail. Yeah. Right, because I can do that. Yeah. Remote access, right? Because I've got to know what's going on at work. Of course. Called in, it was still my day off. I was going through the messages. Yes. Heard one from some company saying, we're after Steve Merchant. Yeah. We want him to do some voiceover work. Yeah. Right? Mm. I can't remember the name of it, but Thanks. I thought, right, I'll, I'll remember to tell Steve. A week later. It doesn't matter, does it? You still got the message, and they. they what, what, what message? Yeah, but voiceovers have to be done in the next couple of days. But I didn't days. get the message. I got all I got was there was a company I don't remember the name, and they phoned you the what voiceover? Uh, well, how does that help me? There are hundreds of thousands of media companies. I, I you didn't take more... down a number. You didn't take down a name. Nothing. I, I was more puzzled why they'd want you to voice anything. <laughs> What? I don't no, but listen to that voice. Oh, you must be annoyed. You must be you annoyed. Wanna, I mean, talk about rubbing salt into the wound. No, but listen to you. Oh, God. I don't know what you- I don't know how you think. I don't know what, how your mind works. Well, I was thinking there must be a tractor sale on somewhere. <laughs> I can't believe- What do I care? What's going no, on? Him? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The I worm has turned. I don't care if they want me to advertise, you know, <laughs> the latest designs in pirate fashion wear. I will do a voiceover because it's money for the rope. I don't care what you think of my voice. Someone was interested. They were offering me money. And you decided arbitrarily, oh, they probably wouldn't want it. They probably made a mistake. I, they wouldn't like the way he talks anyway. I'll delete the message. No, the thing is, right, I what get if paid- been a girl? I get paid to sit here on a Saturday, yeah. right? Play CDs and that, help out with the show, get you decent prizes. I think I, I, I do me bit. Sure. Right? It isn't about running your voiceover work. So hang on, so Carl, let me just get this right. If someone was ever to phone me, right, trying to get in touch with you, to yeah. offer you work, you'd want me to just ignore the message. That is what you're saying to me. You'd prefer that I deleted the message, I ignored it altogether. That's what you'd want for me to do. That's what you'd want me to do. What, someone's calling you for some Someone's phoned me. They say, oh, oh, I can't, I don't know, I, I, I'm a friend of a friend, I've got your number, Steve. Uh, I'd love to use Carl Pilkington for a, 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 an well, exciting sex scene. Well, you're saying it happened. Well, it well happened. I'm saying in the future, if it was to occur, <laughs> if it was to occur, do you want me to just ignore it? Is that what you prefer me to do? Uh, well, it's not like that, though. I, I did tell you, I told you the message. You didn't tell, what? You told me a week later with none of oh, the information I needed. Carl, um, that doctor called last week, that kidney's ready for that, um, little girl that you were doing that sponsored walk for. I forgot to tell you. Oh. I hope it's still alright. They keep it on ice, don't they? I think they do. Uh, uh, selfish, Carl. So selfish. And you've lost us a Beautiful bit of, uh, Snoop on XFM. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Kicking it with, uh, yeah, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, 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 sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, Steve Merchant and, uh, Carl Pilkington. I, what has happened to Carl? Because Carl, I thought, is, you know, is this sort of sweet little buffoon, almost childlike mm. in his, his ways. You know what I mean? Like Charlie Brown after some sort of head injury. And, <laughs> and now he's, and now he's coming back like that, having a go, not, not caring about voiceover work. It's like, cause he have written about him a couple of weeks, it's like he thinks he's better than you in no, some well, way. I do care though, you're out of order saying that, right? Cause Carl, I've sorted you out with tickets for stuff. Carl, he doesn't turn up to. Carl, I received a phone call, you deleted the message offering me voiceover work, you're as bad as my agent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm appalled by it. <laughs> and I thought we were friends. <laughs> ah, at least his agent, when he does it, is losing himself money as well. Yeah, he, you, he, you, he, exactly. You, you've got no comeback. You're still sweet, and to have a go is you. You've got a mank wine. 
Right. For a voice. Like a cartoon Gallagher brother on Coronation Street. I mean, and Steve's, I mean, yes, Steve does sound like a, a Wurzel, but that right. doesn't, do you know what I mean? No, no. A, what about Jethro? Jethro does well. Jethro gets on Des O'Connor any time he wants. Just has to phone Des up. And he's on there. Straight on And there. he's whining like a Wurzel as well. So, you know, to say that that all right, is what, a rubbish- Alright, apart from that then, what else have I done? That's wound you up. But that's 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 a that's a good starting point because you haven't even apologised. No, it's a shock because that's the first time I've let you down, and I didn't really let you down because I passed on the message. You didn't. Well, we've been through it. You didn't okay. pass on the message. Saying I deleted a message for you is not passing on the message. Yeah. I mean, I just think what's happened is that you've got a little bit of celebrity now from the show. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen you being yeah. recognised in pubs and stuff, or people have come up and they said, "Are you Carl?" Because they've seen Ricky. Now it just seems to me that you are not keeping yourself grounded. You are just—you yeah. cannot deal with fame. You've not got the intelligence to cope oh. with the celebrity, oh. and you're just becoming now this kind getting. of ego-driven now monster. It's getting. Now it's getting. No, it's it scares me, Carl. Getting You're not the man I remember. Look, I, I put a lot of work into this. Yeah. I started doing this isn't in my proper job, right? Mm. Where were you in the week? Oh, we got you there. What? Where were you in the week? I said, I said, let's meet up. Let's, you know, come up with some new features and that. Where were you, Carl? You phoned me yeah. about an hour before you wanted to meet. That is not what I would call. I mean, that—that that that is arrogance right there. That's the way I work. That's arrogance right there. That's ego right there. He couldn't. He couldn't go. Uh, it, I, uh, when I came in, he said, "Where's Steve?" I said, "Steve can't make it." I had to tell him why. Steve was staying in to tidy up because his landlady was coming. This, this he couldn't get over. He could not get over that you couldn't make it because you had to stay in with your landlady. Is is he talked about it for about the hour when we were working? What are you talking? I, I last week I had a bad throat. You yeah, wouldn't tolerate that. You last week when you had a bad throat. Where, where were you? <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't we do any work then? Because you're at home with your mum and your dad. <laughs> you, you were on holiday, weren't you? <laughs> Why didn't you get your mum and your dad to clean the flat? Oh, he's done it again. He's hey. done you again, mate. Play a record. How has he done me? What? <laughs> they live in Bristol. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. The joke's on you. He couldn't get him to clean the flat. <laughs> ah, I don't know who's laughing at who then. <laughs> right, listen. Can right. we just go back to laughing at Carl? Okay. Because I know right. where we stand there. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Do you want to, uh, That's the natural order of things. <laughs> I know, yeah. The world's gone topsy turvy. <laughs> he's, he's stepped out of the pecking yeah. order. Right. Well, someone who I don't let down, right? Are the listeners of this show? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to uh, read out the prizes for uh, Busters? We'll get, okay. we'll get that one in. Oh, we're are we not doing rock busters again, are we? Yeah. Well, it was a shambles last week. We we cancelled it two weeks ago. What? Oh, uh, it just, I mean, there, there you are right there, Rick. I mean, b both you and I, and let's be honest, we're the guys with, the, with our names on the poster. I know, it's yeah. It's supposed to be your show. And, and yet, our faces. Exactly, and yet. <laughs> we have to have, we have to be on tube stations with people laughing at yeah. us. Yeah, well, they're not laughing at me, really. They're, they're well, good I don't know. Better, what do you think people think of the poster, Carl? Seriously. Uh. No, I don't want to know his opinion. It's just gonna be insulting. <laughs> My it point is this, he was Rick. looking at you. My point is this, Rick. We used to be able to decide what the content of this show was. I now know. it's him. It's just him. He wants to do rock busters. He gets to do it. I know, and it's it's awful rock busters. Like, like, uh, Tourette's Trent Darby. Not only is that offensive, it doesn't work as a clue. Saying that, have you come up with anything for this week? What's the prizes? I'll read out the prizes. We've got. Who's the winner? The winner. Very lucky, Sandra Cassidy of Leon C. She gets all those great prizes. You know, we've actually had people emailing in saying. This is the worst rockbusters ever because it was too easy. It was boring. Oh, uh, 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 this is just, uh, don't shoot the messenger. Oh, dear. other people saying um, it well, really has run its course. Some people genuinely agree. Oh, with Oh, Carl, this must hurt, mate. Stinging attacks on you. Um, some people just slagging you off generally, saying that oh, you, win, you whinge all the time. It looks like Steve like. was right when he um, sort of like poo poos your ideas. So when he. Uh, when he wheeze on your so bonfire. Other, someone else, I swear to God, someone else emailed in and said, don't bother sending me the prizes, take them to a charity shop, or pawn them, give me the money, I'd rather have it. So I don't know what to say, Carl, I just wonder if it really has run its course now. Alright, well, well we'll see what you come up with next for you, well, then. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see what you do, let's see what you come in with. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <About> five to one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you'll be popping in with another, another hip-hop track. Yeah. Full of, uh, yeah. Full of effing and Jeff well, in no, I, no, I, won't, I won't bring it into you, I'll do it myself at home. Cause obviously that makes <laughs> oh, it easier. Oh, dear. Obviously you can't cope. Oh, dear. Are you actually gonna be here next week or are you still gonna be in Cornwall? No, you see there again, I'll be back, I'll be back in time. <sighs> and in the, in the week, when I go to, you know, Cornwall to see the monkey world. Yeah, you're two days past work. the monkey world. That still work. Yeah. <laughs> What? what? You're going to interview some of the monkeys? What? I love stories. that. I love that. You, you were going, could a monkey live without bones? And so I'm going, Carl, shut the f- please, just look at the monkeys and eat your ice cream. And that's work, is it? What? 
Oh, well, dear. No, so just go back to insults briefly. Go on. You know, it's saying. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I, uh, see, that's... Goofy, that's no, not No, no, fair. no, because that's, that's what he said, it's in my head. I, what I, do you mean he said no, that? Did he no, say that? No, no, I mean... When did you call me Goofy? No, he didn't. Okay. He said about what's in my head. Hey, no, when it's, come on. come off it. Don't what? Who's calling me Goofy? No. I'm not even Goofy. Goggle eyes, fair enough. No, yeah, but you I can know. sort your account, I can't. But yes. you know, I can, how can I sort my look out? I'm not even Goofy, you've that's got, not fair. You've got the proper features. What? Just needs sorting out a bit. I can't help it if, if my hair's not good. Who do you think's cooler to look at, Steve or the Chemical Brothers? Steve. Definitely, yes! You're absolutely right, Carl, and that's the first sensible thing you've said if, for a long time. If I was time. to work with Steve on, on some music, yeah. if I had the choice, I think Steve would look better on a album cover. Really? Yeah. What would you do? Would you change him at all? To, what would you do with his I'd, image? I'd put him in the distance so I'd just... <laughs> be... I can't believe this is- this No, is just so you don't look as tall, that's doing you a favour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I was on the, this is true, I was on the, uh, <sighs> on the tube, right, coming in to meet Gervais the other day, and I was wearing a suit and I, my mobile phone slipped out of my pocket and it landed on the seat, and I didn't realise this, and as I was about to get off, some bloke who was sat there, like an old guy, he picked up the phone, he went, Oi! Uh, Lanky, you dropped your mobile phone! <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, I thank you for pointing out I dropped my phone, but did you have to do the lanky? But you knew who he meant. I bet you turned round straight away. <laughs> it worked. You knew who he meant, yes, Steve. But he's done you again. But I was the only up. person stood up. It was a fairly empty train. Was it, was there any other lanky people there? No. Well then. And I was on my mobile phone, and I was chatting away to someone, and, uh, what can only be described as a prostitute, Go on. Stood on the street corner. Was she a woman that uh, gives you sex for money? Yes. That is a prostitute. <laughs> yes, that's what I thought. Go on. And as I was walking by, she said, do you want to buy sex? <laughs> what a boys? No, you sure my... it wasn't a market trader giving six plums or No, it was definitely six for a quid. No, it was definitely a prostitute. Yeah. And what annoyed me about it, what I wanted to pick her up on something, was the fact that I was on my mobile phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so can you imagine who, who would I, I? What am I going to hang up? Sorry, mum, can I call you back? I've you know, you offer. know, you say you want me to meet more women, and you know, you sent me that. Thirty quid <laughs> exactly. for my birthday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Johnson, I'm really excited about the job. Can I call you back? I'm just going to negotiate with a whore. <laughs> and it was, it was like, it was just sort of, you could tell that she was clearly probably desperate for crack or a latest yeah. fix of smack. So she was literally, she, the normal etiquette of prostitution, you know, that they hang around, they show some thigh. <laughs> I've seen this in they films. Will, will ya? Yeah, they exactly. Will, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take you out for a meal, all that I sort know, of thing. That had sort of gone out of the window and yeah, she was just sure. there, desperate, running around Did the she streets. go out of the window? Like a Because that's another thing they sometimes do, specialist <laughs> exactly. ones. But I was yeah. shocked because I've never been, uh, propositioned before like that. Really? In London. It's weird, isn't it? Carl, thoughts? I, I think you'd be sort of approached a lot because they tend to <laughs> sort of go for people who look like they haven't got much chance. Sure. And I'm not being mean. No, you know no, 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 no. What do you mean? Time Sorry, to, I, I'll let you go back to it. In what way aren't you being mean? By saying that no, Steve, Steve, Steve knows is a little bit odd looking. <laughs> I don't think. Well, <laughs> no, he does. <laughs> Do you know? Do you know? Yeah, before... no, no, but it's not whether what he thinks of his looks. Yeah. It's what he thinks of you talking about his looks on. No, but it's Go it's on. like how you were talking before about, you know, your eyes are bad. It's nature's little way of saying, look, nothing to see here, right? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. What well, when you, you look mean? in the mirror and that, they've gone, look, he hasn't got the looks, let's make his eyes bad, right? Yeah. Nothing to see here. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, see, we're balancing I... it out, right? Yeah. And it's funny, right? Now we're on the topic. Sorry, sorry, right, Johnny on... Depp. Now hey, listen, <laughs> but I'm gonna, my, my chest is gonna burst at this but moment. All, whenever we go into this conversation, I always think to myself, Carl, do you know what you look like? <laughs> I, I'm gonna <laughs> you know, seriously, can I be honest with you? I you look know. like, you know if you've got like a balloon, a hot air balloon, <laughs> right, just a little balloon like a party balloon, right. if you drew a little face on it, right, <laughs> and inflated it about halfway, that's what you look like. <laughs> right, I so, No, play a record, no, I don't want to get into this, listen, it's too now, intense. Now, now you've, you've got onto this, let's just nip it in the bud now. I'll tell you something that I wasn't gonna tell you because I think- I don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear well, it. Right, it was on the tube. Right, well I was, someone told me they were on the tube, mm. right, and um, it, uh, the, the tube pulled into a station, right, <laughs> and one of the women saw the poster that's yeah. out at the moment with you and Rick on it, right? Yeah. So this, this woman apparently goes, uh, oh look, there's, uh, it's Ricky, Ricky's on the radio, right? And uh, the other woman goes, oh yeah, d d don't you listen to it? So she goes, oh I didn't, I didn't know he was on the radio. And she goes, oh. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, look at. Because he didn't look, he found this bad one. 
<laughs> she said, oh, look at that. Look at that person he's with. So she goes, yeah, 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 yeah. She said, that's Steve. <laughs> she said, I'm kind of, I was uh, sort of aware that he looked odd because Carl mentions it on the radio. Yeah. So, so it wasn't as much of a blow to me, but I can see how it was a bit of a shock to you. Yeah. So, uh, that's, that's, that's weird, isn't it? Yeah. And that isn't me sort of telling this woman to say anything. That was all happened without anybody else sort of bringing it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, was it? Sorry, you seem to be relishing this. Was it because of the little balloon story that made you? I'll, I'll honestly, Steve, I want to told you, but if you're going to start, you know, having a pop, yeah, do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. like, I can't just sit here and <laughs> take sure. it and that. No, no. I mean, all yeah. oh, mates. Yeah, it's just uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I was just mistaken for Johnny yeah. Vegas. Steve's got a story about that. If you want to have a go at me, well, you know, someone just thought you were a fat. With a beard, which is true. Well, don't have a go at me because he said you looked. Well, you started it. No, I didn't. Yeah, no, did. I didn't. You were milking it. You were I egging was, him I on. I was laughing. You were egging him on. <laughs> yeah, I sort of was. Yeah. But let's not, you know. Oh, it's a good job you've got lots of good mates like Jonathan Ross you can go and hang out with. <laughs> don't need other friends, people who've helped you in your career. This is what the phone message he left me Wednesday on my mobile. But I just uh, is chatting about certain things that are going on at the moment. Uh, what he does need to know. Um, old Duncan, who he mentions, is my agent. And, you know, you you understand a few other things. But this is the sort of message I get from Carl. Right? Windsor. Old messages. Alright. Ten past twelve. Hello? 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 Yesterday, DVDs signing for BBC London. I don't work there, but I've been dragged into that. I've got a woman on, uh, leaving a message from Talk PR going on about, do you, do you want to go and see Pop Idol again? Right? They're just saying, uh, you and some listeners can go. So I'm sure you'll love that. I've got Jim Benner wanting you to introduce the tin buckets at the Astoria. So can, can you just like let Duncan know? That I'm, I'm doing his job whilst he's sat on his ass with his thumb firmly up his ass. Can you let him know that I'm running around like a c here sorting shit out for you? All right, see you later. <laughs> so, do you know what I mean? I know, but that's the kind of phone message he's leaving. But, but, do you remember but, who he was before but, you? But no, he's even with. annoyed that he gets a phone call. I remember he got a phone call for you to do a voiceover and didn't yeah. pass it on. You missed a voiceover. That yeah. was thousands of pounds. No, I did, I did it, pass it on though. I told you. You I did. Said you said someone had phoned. Yeah. That's yeah. not good enough. But who's that? Well, she, she didn't say, and I didn't ask, but- Of course she said! She didn't say. Rubbish. So you didn't take the number down? Just when she went, oh, can you tell Steve to call me, and you went, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> I just thought you'd know her already. I should've oh. known, it was a woman, so I should've known. He's having a go, you see? Unbelievable. I don't know how it's gone back on me, you're the one who was picking on it. Yeah, exactly, I'm saying. I'm defending, why is he having a go but at you he because- he never picks on Ricky, because he knows you are his bread and butter. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> you know what I mean? The only reason he's got Mondays off is because you're still doing this show. Yeah. That's yeah. why he's scared of you. That's why he's like, he has a go at you on the phone, but he always picks on me because he knows, you know, I'm a pushover, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> he's scared of you. I can't believe, I don't know how it works. Is that true? Steve, I'm always sorting you out. I look after you. Mm. I'm sorting you out you with tickets, I'm sorting you out with lager out. What do you mean you're sorting out about tickets and lager? What's this? Right, whenever you want tickets. Yeah, yeah it's all I don't want to use this as like moaning time and that because yeah. I don't like to moan, I'm busy and that, right? <laughs> I've sorted you out tickets for gigs. Yeah. Right? Well, somebody doesn't even turn up to. Yeah. yeah we won't even go on about that. Yeah. Right? Lager. He was sorting about the cure, he complained it was boring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was that big drum of lager that yeah. you had, and you said, oh, put that in your room for me. Yeah. Because I don't want to carry it home. Right? I'm lazy. So I said, all right, then I'll put it in my room. It goes missing, it gets nicked. <laughs> then you have a go at me because it got nicked. Yeah. I get you another one. You make me carry it around town for you for half an hour, then you say, oh, I can't be bothered taking it on, can you take it back to work for me? Yeah. Yeah. But, interestingly, this is like a year ago, so it's, it's, on, it's still, still pressing on you, Oh, hang it? on, and I forgot the one when we had an argument over 50p. <laughs> yeah, when we went out for a coffee. You didn't 50p back that you owed me. Uh, that was the day, same day you'd given him about 40 quid worth of lager. <laughs> but, see, this is my problem, this was my point at the time. It's not the 50, 50p, in terms of money, is not what's important. The fact that you think you don't have to give me money back because it's only 50p, that was the point at the state. Mm -hmm. I, it's me who makes a decision, oh, don't worry about the 50p, not you, it's only 50p, I'm not gonna give it to you. Do you know what I mean? There's mm -hmm. gotta be rules, otherwise it's chaos, Carl. Come on, mate. Alright? I don't wanna fall out about no, it. No, it's not <laughs> right. 
Should we kiss and make up? Do you want that? Do you want <laughs> that? Yeah. yeah. Well, should we play a little record and come back to this? Because I can't believe it started with you slagging him off, Rick, and I've ended up as the monster. I know. Bit of R.E.M. Yeah. Well, we we we're not going to do uh, freak of the week here. Okay. Right? Because we've we've done quite a bit of that in the last twenty minutes. Right? We've so we'll on that. freaks. You think? Yeah. Sure. We'll just shift it a little bit. Okay. Uh, I don't like to keep saying. Don't want people to be thinking we're sort of taking the mick out of anyone. <laughs> no. Right? Because we're not about that. I feel that like I can do a little bit of it because I work with with you, Steve. Yeah. Right? <laughs> sure. It, it gives yeah. me that right. It's like a care worker. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. Well, it's like, it's like that thing of you can't be homophobic because I've got a couple of gay mates and sure, stuff. Sure. Sure. It, I think it sort of gives me that edge. Yeah. Right. So, so you're not freakophobic. Because you work with Steve. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So, yeah. uh, yeah. Okay. Well, well, I think by, by, by that token, I should be able to sort of slag off, you know, the mentally ill. What's or at least mentally handicapped. What, what size are you? Um, mine changes. I'm on the edge. Oh, right. God. Okay. He even makes that complicated. Of course. He I even am. makes twaddle complicated. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, it changes depending what paper you read. Yeah. All right. In Twi theory, 23rd what would you... of September. So I think. Yeah. Most of the time I'm a Virgo, I think. Oh. Well, I'll tell you. Write, write that down, uh, listeners, uh, 23rd of September, uh, and come round and give him the bumps. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what, I mean? Well, according to this, I mean, it, I, I mean, you've been criticising this, Rick. Sure. You've been saying that there's maybe not, not anything in the Yeah, yeah well, on. hang on, let me just read the something. Yeah, uh, 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 is this gonna change my mind? Well, Am I gonna eat my words? The typical Virgoan. Mm, words. Okay. The what? physical appearance of the typical Virgoan. Yeah. High forehead. That's not true. Cranium may seem too big in comparison with the face. Look at Carl, look at Carl. But how specific is that? Has an extremely large forehead, has a high hairline. That's mm. not true though, is it? May be quite tall. What are the blokes like? Often has one foot turned in more than the other. What do they- they've just described Rain Man! What is that? How can I be specific? Well that's why it sounds like Carl! <laughs> <laughs> what? One foot turned in? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Well, have they even bothered doing one for you? Because there isn't many people who- Hang on a minute. Let him finish, No, I'm just saying- Go on. What are you I, saying? I, I sort of think I'm fairly average looking, but I'm saying, have they wasted a page in that book for whatever you are? <laughs> <laughs> it started off me being dissing him and stuff, and you've been nice. Hang on a minute. I don't think you can be a Virgoan, because it says, uh, that they are normally quick, alert, and intelligent. <laughs> No, actually, I have to say, it says here, uh, behaviour and personality traits of the Virgoan, uh, uh, is an, as a child, is an excellent mimic, uh, can learn many things in a short time. Yeah. Not really true of you, is it? Well, Re what? Rarely like questions what? authority, but frequently questions facts. You yeah. never question facts. Yeah, you never question authority. He's scared never. of authority. Yeah. Um, uh, da, 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 da. uh, you're usually trying to very, very upset if teased. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Hang he, on a minute, though. Yeah. Can't yeah. take a bit of stick, too much depends, pressure. If you yeah. can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Yeah. No. What to teach a young Virgoan? Myths, fairy stories, make believe, daydreams, and how to use imagination should all be taught to young Virgoans. So they have plenty of magical moments to remember in their adult years oh. when they are often alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing my mind. I know. This is good stuff. This so, is really good stuff. All right. Well, let's see. What What are you? Uh, well, um, I don't, don't think we should talk about that. Yeah, let's, let's have a look. It says the Vergoan is- I love some of the specifics of this. Vergoan yeah. is an employer. He's excellent as the boss of a small company. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> don't get him on a Tuesday. He's yeah, probably stamp collecting then. Yeah. Come on, he see. loves a bit um, of haddock. Okay, let me look at mine. Oh, oh that is good though, Carl, isn't it? That is you all over. I've changed your mind. It's brilliant. It's a real science. They've really put their work in with this one. Let me see, Sagittarius, Sagittarius, uh, Sagittarian is a happy, playful little clown. Little. Greets everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me see, Sagittarius at home. Uh, He's only gonna read the good bits though, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. If that's it, what, what can it say? Mm. Uh, have, have, they, have they done yours in sort of small print, cause you've got special eyes? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that insult is, Carl. What kind of an insult is that? Well. He's up to that. Look at his face. <laughs> He's done me. Oh, oh dear. And come back to me. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Still arguing. This time about 
having help from you and my dad. What do you think, Carl? No, I'm not- we- I don't want this to turn into some sort of wacky type of thing where we're pretending we're arguing. Yeah. Well, we're not pretending we're not we pretending are. We're not pretending you are arguing. Yeah, I know. I know what people will think we're messing about. Oh, right? I don't, wouldn't have thought so. We just need to- we can talk about it later. Sort it out. Hmm. Yeah. It's just that Carl's a little bit stressed. I'm not- I'm not, I'm not stressed, but- And he doesn't really understand that, you know- so, you know, me and Steve have got lots of different jobs in the week, he's just got one job. Yeah, but and we sort of rely on people getting messages to us, you know, as soon as they get them, you know, and not sort of deleting them from their phone selfishly. Yeah. Just things like that, you know, people being on the ball. Not just thinking about themselves all the time, not just thinking about number one. What do you think, Carl? Whatever. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Whatever. Don't get all maudlin in again. Just have a little discussion. Yeah, this will annoy you. Guess what? Think of this, you little slaphead twat. Um, apparently, <laughs> that's so in his arse, that's so in his arse. Right, apparently, women can get bald treatment on the National Health Service, but men can't. What do you think of that? Do you think that's fair? Is that a fact? It's a fact. We what? should point out that Carl is, uh, would you say balding? Yeah. Would that be fair? Well, either that or a wide parting. <laughs> <laughs> See? Strokes. Someday. Now that was a better, better choice, wouldn't it, to start off with? Um, oh hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen, XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously, Steve Mitchell. No, come on, let's get my name right from now on. That, that novelty's worn off. What is it? Is it- Steve Merchant. Oh yeah, they- yeah. That's the wrong one, isn't it, Mitchell? The Guardian got it wrong, it's Steve Merchant. And the more I say Mitchell, the more people are thinking- Exactly, might it might be Mitchell. Oh god, sorry Dave. Um, <laughs> but Carl wanted to start off with the stereophonics. Oh, loser. Cause it was a newer track. And Carl now, we've made him what he is, he was nothing when Nobody. we found him. He was right? like work experience. And now he's going, oh, we should start off with the stereo phones. I'm going, Trying oh, to tell you what to do, If really. I want anyone's opinion, I don't. <laughs> Basically. But he'd probably come to me, I imagine, wouldn't he? <laughs> before, I'd be the first person. Before Carl, yeah. I'd consult you, Steve. Thank so you. So, just keep it, just cause he uh, was in a, was it, pill yeah, he's making mobile music. Describes it. I cannot wait. I'm looking forward to this. I mean, I literally can't wait, should we do it now? Well, I'm tempted to save it cause I just want to mention to people, um, that, uh, they should be very excited. Because, uh, it's gonna be Carl's special night tomorrow. You excited, Carl? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is, yeah, um, uh, me and Steve, because we were nominated, we get a guest. For the Bachelor uh, Awards. Um, and it's, uh, it doesn't say guest, it actually says, um, you know, uh, partner. So I'm taking, um, my partner. And, uh, Steve's taking Carl. Yeah. But what Carl doesn't realise is, you will have to pretend you're his partner, otherwise you yeah. wouldn't be able to- Yeah, we'll have to hold hands when says, the red carpet. Is this your, is this really your partner? It's not just a guest. They have That's to. how it is. Neither we go in like that, or we can't get in. You have to. You just have to be with him when you go up there. I mean, you have to, uh, d does yeah, he have to? Hold you should. We should hold hands. But I think what we should do is just to make sure that there's nothing at all that like it's going to go wrong. We should just do a little kiss. Just like, and just or, when we or, get or be seen sort of like cheek to cheek, just to show them that yeah. you know you're not. He's, he's like not Elton getting, John and David he's not just Smith. getting his mates in for a free meal. You are actually partners. No, I'm not. I'm not for that. Why not? Well, because we know we're not actually gay. No, but, but yeah, but so you, it's not a problem. you've come out of it looking quite good because you've got a good looking fella. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, i meant to look like, you know, I mean, I'm not gay, but if I was, I don't think I'd go for your thing. Oh, he's done you, Steve! It's turned on you again! I cannot believe- We were trying to get him! Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. I have got the cream of London's totty <laughs> phoning me up trying to get an invite to the BAFTAs, yeah. right? We have very graciously asked you if you'd like to come along. Well, that yeah. worries me even more that you've got women calling you up. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, Carl, I can't choose between them. If I let one of them down, I'm gonna they're gonna destroy yeah. them. Is they, yeah. they'll, they'll be they'll be ruined. Their yeah. lives will be ruined. It's better to, for me to take you and not you know ruin the lives of any of those poor when, women. When when he told them he was no. taking you, it was like a scene from Graceland. There was just like there women, was weeping. They were crying. Like it was horrible. Hundreds of them, and really? he just went. And I got he, upset. He just had to say, "Look, just chill out, bitches," didn't you? I did. I just said, "You know, you're all my hoes, but yeah. I can't choose between you." So I'm taking Carl. So I'm taking Carl. You know, he gets. He could get you a discount frocks. No, I had a letter from the people that there's a no, organization. No, listen, Carl. There's an organization that sponsors the BAFTA Awards yeah. in terms of clothes and fashion. They sent me a letter. They said your partner. They've not specified the sex. They've said your partner can come along and choose yeah. an outfit. Now I suspect. By the look of it, it is a woman's outfitters. I'm thinking we could get you a lovely trouser suit. Well, you have it a may look suit, feminine, right? But I think people will be fooled. It'd, just be, it'd just be a little bit roomy in the hip and that probably now on the shoulders. But you're a bit skinny. Why don't you take it? Because it's a lot of an insult. And maybe just some pearls as well. <laughs> 
be lovely. Wouldn't you, wouldn't well, you, uh, I haven't got anything sorted to wear yet. See, you're slagging me off, you're likely to be end up going in a tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I know what Steve's like, he is tight, right? He's, well. he's, he, no, he is. <laughs> and you know that, don't you, Steve? Financially, I mean, I'm not, you mean? Well, no, I mean, just the way you are, you're very sure. sort of, you know, you, you're not, you're not wasteful with your money. I'm careful. <laughs> no, I'm not wasteful, absolutely right. No, no, but to the extreme. Not towards the extreme. Not towards the extreme. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look come after on, the pennies, on, the pains will take care of themselves. All right? <sighs> Simple to remember, good advice. Yeah, All right? but the thing is, right, um, I know that I take the mickey out of you for like, you know, the way you look and stuff. Sure. Right? Well, I'm right back at you. But the thing is, you can't help that. <laughs> Absolutely. But I'll tell you something that women don't like. Sure. And it's fellas who are tight with the money. Sure. I'm not- I'm not frugal with money with ladies. I'm frugal <laughs> with money with you. Mm, well, I've I- have got no reason to splash money out on you. I've never seen you splash money out. Well, you've never mm. been out with me. Have you ever- have, Steve, have you ever splashed out on a lady? Um, no, but I hope to one day. <laughs> the right lady. <laughs> Play a record. I'm not going at the moment, I'm not going, and I'm desperate to see him, man. I mean, he's, you know, he's gonna do a great concert, it's mm. his only one in, in London. I can't believe that being on the radio, being on XFM, you know, the, the listenership's going up apparently, mm. I can't believe I can't get a ticket. I, I've asked Carl, he's done nothing, he's done nothing. Hang on a minute. No, no, no Carl, Carl had a very good point. point. Nothing. Carl, say what you said when he was whinging no, in the face. First of all, while she moaning, you also asked in the week for a badly drawn boy album. Yeah. You got in today. Yeah. There's one there for you. Well, yeah, yeah. but it's yin and yang. And it's Carl. like, yeah, but I don't, you know. Carl, what's Steve ever done for you? That's what you got to ask yourself. What has Steve ever done for you? Well, he took me to the BAFTAs. Yeah, but only because no one else would probably want to go with you. <gasps> <gasps> I can't believe that. What is I this? I do not believe that. Oh, Steve, I'm going to stitch you up now, Carl, and it's in a nice way. And don't worry, it won't be too bad. He won't take too bad. Carl sent me a little text message today. Right. Um. No. No. Oh, don't. what is this? Um. I. Right. Okay. Okay. That you know I'm in a very frail mood at the moment. No, no, I'm you're like this, Bruce. This is funny because me and St uh, me and him have been like sending uh, trivia back and forth to each other, which is another point, right? I sent him. Oh well, I'll get to that in a minute. I, I thought he'd really be amazed with um. Right, well, while I'm you're right. fiddling, if you can make my dream come true uh, to go and see Bruce Springsteen tomorrow, then give us a call on the usual yeah, number. Yeah, but like I said, Steve. What? Right? It's, it's n wouldn't be- right, you just said when the song was on, can't believe it, right, we work at XFM and I can't get tickets for Springsteen, right? Yeah. Mm. We're working radio, we should get tickets. Mm. Right, now think Which of I'm the amount- Which I'm willing to pay for. Yeah, but yeah. think of the- yeah, but if it's sold out, it's sold out. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but that's just something they say. Right, that's just what they say, is it? Right, so everybody on local radio stations say, do you know, I, I like that Bruce Springsteen, I, I want a free ticket, right? So another say- oh, I tried to phone, I phoned for an hour and a half, I couldn't get through. Not long enough, I've put not the hours enough. in. Not long enough. Not long enough. What are you talking <laughs> about? I put the hours in. No. Right? So another <laughs> 400 people turn up at the gig, they cram them all in, there's people being crushed, you know, they've paid the money early, they were up early that day when, when the phone lines were open, whilst you were probably sleeping and that. So they're dedicated and they're the ones at the front getting crushed. <laughs> what? Would you mind that be crushed? happy if you were there getting crushed? I don't mind, I'll sit at the side of the stage and watch him. Yeah, but I the, don't mind. But everyone will say that then. And then what? before you know it, yeah. no one can see anything because no, you're Carl's on the right stage. On this one. Leave right, it. Read, right, I'm going to give you this here. I'm now handing over my mobile phone to Steve to read the. You can see it's from Carl at the top, but just read it out as you scroll down. Just read it out loud. Is this a text message from? Yeah, this is a text message to me from Carl. Read it out. To see at night as well as an owl, you would need eyes the size of grapefruits. If only Stephen could turn his head right round as well. <laughs> I, Carl, I can't believe it. <laughs> What- what upsets me most, Carl, right, is not the fact that you've been slagging me off behind my back, it's the fact that you've got the cheek to come on here and moralise because you've failed to get me tickets and make a dream come true. You've come on here trying to pass the buck and say that it's a health and safety problem, when mm. in actual fact it's a Carl Pilkington problem. Do that, do that, I've got it in a I can't, I'm devastated, I'm devastated, you I know, know, I- I didn't- and then, I didn't let's buy a record. I just- I'm upset. I should've eaten this banana. Off What's the number? It's uh, 08700 800 1234, but if it's sold out, Steve, it's sold out. Oh. A bit of a classic, eh? R.E.M. I bet if Ricky wanted to go, it would be fine. I'm sure someone could sort it out then. Who? Oh, if Ricky Gervais wants to go, then I'm you can come. Are you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you want some tickets, though? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you went in. There was George Best, one of your footballing heroes was there, a that, load that of other good. big names. We- you sat in a prime position, you came backstage with a load of other big names. 
Hey, you had a lovely bit of grub. You were filming this thing for the DVD we're making. That's you. That's you, a cameraman on our DVD. And yet you think, oh, and you now you look grumpy because you had a couple of pints and you. Oh, I can't believe. So it. tell us why you didn't enjoy it. Because the ceremony. What didn't you enjoy about that? Far it was interminable, wasn't it? Far too long. Wasn't it awful? Three so boring. I'm hours. I'm sorry. I thought you were going to say something. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Three hours. Yeah. Um. I mean, I suppose for you two, at least, you know, you were gonna get something. Sure. Yeah. But, <laughs> with me, it's like, I mean, I've never graduated or anything, so. Have you not? I'm trying to think of, of a situation. Basically, I sat there three hours knowing that I'm not gonna get anything out of the night. Yeah. Right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> no did you, sorry, me. when we invited you and you said yes, did you think you were up for an award? No. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> I thought we were gonna be sat round tables, having a nice yeah. bit of food, yeah. whilst people are going up there winning awards. Yeah. But three hours of the same thing over and over again. I mean, if a film's three hours in the cinema, yeah. you go, well it's long but, you know, I wonder how it's gonna end. Yeah. But this was just like the same <laughs> thing over <laughs> and over again. Some guy going up, thanks a lot, cheers for the bit of brass. And mm. then going down, sitting down, the same thing over and over again. Mm. I wouldn't, I, honestly, right? I'd say it was one of the worst things I've ever had to do. Christ! <laughs> <laughs> no, I enjoyed the night afterwards when we did have a bit of lamb and a nice bit of veg and that. That was yeah. all right, and I went home and I was happy, and I got the the little freebie bag that you're talking about that we gave yeah. away, yeah. Um, which wasn't much good stuff in it. Oh, all right, No, what, Suzanne, what would you have done right. on that Saturday night? Suzanne, what would you have done if, or the Sunday night rather? What would you have done had you been at home? I would have stayed in with Suzanne, right, watching telly, having a nice bit of. Pate on toast or something, cup of tea, watching 24. But instead, I had to buy an expensive suit so I didn't show you up. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is what I did. Yeah. And what did you spend on your suit? Well, in total, right, because you know, the shoes and the suit and the shirt and the tie, it was about 600 quid. <laughs> That's the most expensive evening ever. <laughs> Uh, that's, well, that's what I'm saying to you. <laughs> and the daft thing is, it's dark in there. I don't know why you've got to wear a nice suit. You can't, you can't <laughs> wear a track suit, for it's goodness sake. It's dark in there! Oh, oh, oh. No, just a shirt and that. It doesn't oh. make you a better person wearing a suit. No, it doesn't you know make you a mean? better person, no. We're not that's... claiming it made you a better person. No, well, that annoyed me. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, it was an experience, innit? That's why I went, because you think, if I didn't go, if I would have said to you when you invited me, no, Steve, I don't want to go, then I would have never known, right? Yeah. And yeah. I've, I've, uh, that, that's my sort of thing in life, right? Yeah. If yeah. something comes up, you should take it, even if you're not gonna like it, it's a bit of an experience. Right. Do you know what he said to me? I phoned him up because we had to meet up, yeah. and obviously he had to pose as my, uh, gay lover. Yeah. He had to get in, right? Yeah. He phoned me, well, what do you said something to me like, I bought a suit, I'm looking good. He said, I'm looking good. <laughs> People will think, how on earth did he end up with that good looking guy? <laughs> so he got into the yeah. role. That was what he said to me. <laughs> getting into it. Such an insult. Fire record. Do, do, do you not care about the job? I mean, I've got to ask because, you know what I mean, if I was in charge, I'd worry about your motivation or... Because we... Yesterday, we were trying to work out what you enjoyed doing, and we got to, uh, Manchester United and moaning. And that is, that is the two we came I, up I with. I don't know where you get the moaning thing You're from. always whinging. About what? Everything. What, when? When did I last have a moan? Uh, just before we came on air. Right, and why was that? <laughs> um, I don't know, I can't remember. Because well, we were in good mood, we were in a good mood, me and Rick. I'll tell you why. Go on. Because you brought a song in. At ten to one, yeah, with a load of effing and jeffing in it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. saying, "Can you edit this?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. that's your job. You could have brought it in yesterday. No, I couldn't. Why not? I hadn't thought of it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but why? But why? But why are you whinging? That's your job. And I didn't come in ten minutes before. It was a good twenty minutes before. It just took you ages because you were whinging and moaning mm. to even get started. Uh, been very quiet week. Uh, been checking. Uh, I was looking in books last night and stuff. Uh, so is there any monkey news? I, I've I've got some, but just because it's not that good, something else I found out that I thought I'd share with you. Go on. I was looking in the Guinness Book of Records, right, because I thought they'll have something in there about monkeys or something, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's a little monkey, I think it lives in Asia, right? Uh, there's loads of them live in Asia. Might and, just be travelling, but yeah. And, um, something I found out, I don't know if they've got it right. And that's why I want to bring it up. Uh, apparently, it's the mammal, right, that's got sort of the, the pointiest eyes. Eyes that pop out of the red. Steve. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Now, <laughs> the thing is, right? I thought that's interesting. Yeah. Apparently, it's, it's, it's the biggest with the sort of goggle eye type thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, go on. Apparently, they, they come out of the red, um, 1.6 centimetres. 1.6 centimetres? What, you mean they protrude? Yeah. Of the through from the head at 1.6. Okay. What, how, how long? Have you got a ruler, Rick? Right? <laughs> one point one point six. He's, he's having a go. I'd say I'd be I'm a little bit a annoyed if the monkeys beat me. <laughs> well, I don't think it has. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> Is there anything we can? I mean, what's one point six? Oh, can you? It's about drop your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, um, well. Oh, about three quarters of an inch. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Have they got it right or what? <laughs> Maybe I should come down to Monkey World with you next week. Uh, uh, so anyway, so that's that's not the monkey <laughs> news. That's just something that cropped up. And <laughs> sure, <laughs> I do know. Once when we were playing pool in the office, I think Lucy was your partner. Yeah. It was me and Ash versus you and Lucy, and um, you were having trouble because his glasses kept slipping down, so <laughs> Lucy pushed his glasses up, his nose, but the glasses touched his eye. <laughs> Do you remember that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he started it. He started it. Well, you're the one who joined in. <laughs> no, I know, and I feel, I'm, I feel bad now. Yeah. <laughs> makes me nervous when he goes, yeah. It's like, play a No, I'm just trying to think about which part of your fat, middle-aged physique I can pick on. <laughs> the tits would be a good Yeah, stuff. yeah. Oh, the belly. Sure. Oh, what do you think of that? <laughs> oh, that, that's, what is that? Do you know when I left the pub in a bit of a mood, cos yeah. I, I just fed up with not getting anything done? Yeah. Walking down the road, I was thinking, how can I get out of this? How can I stop having to work with them? I'm thinking, I wonder if I, if I leave, I wonder if they'll be funny and they'll go, and then my boss will be giving me stick. I'm thinking, how long, how much notice have I got to give out? How, how, and all this is going through my mind. I'm walking home and I got in, said to Suzanne, I'm sick of it. She's going, you need to do it when I get a new kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but how big does the kitchen need to be? I was saying, do we need a big kitchen? Can we get a small one? Have we got enough for a small kitchen? Do we need so many cupboards? Can we just have wood instead of steel? <laughs> all this, try to get out of doing this. Yeah. It's always just, I always feel like, you know, cos I, I like to think that I'm not perhaps as bad as him. Yeah, no. You annoy me in different ways. <laughs> like what? How does he annoy you? Well, stuff, stuff that, you know, I come up with ideas, say yeah. Cheap as Chimps, yeah. uh, Rock Busters springs yeah. to mind, yeah. uh, 15 like Taiwan. Rock uh, <laughs> 15 Taiwan. Let's just remind people what 15 Taiwan was. It was a little feature that I wanted to give a run, you know, give it a little run, see if people like it. Uh, the premise being? No, there's no premise, it's just a title. No, we were gonna get fifteen sort of ornaments, you'd explain them, and then people would call <laughs> up and say, that oh, one's from yeah. Taiwan. Honestly? <laughs> Carl, you just explained why I didn't think that was a good idea. Yeah, By explaining the good- No, so, you know, the funny thing is, Steve, right, I was walking down Regent Street on Monday, walked past one of these big stores, right, and they've got all famous quote quotes on the windows, right, yeah. and one of them was something like, an absurd idea is often a great idea. Yeah. Do you know who said that? Go on. Einstein. Yes. Which made me wonder, if you were his mate, would he ever have done E equals MC squared? <laughs> or would you have said, don't bother with that, <laughs> it's not gonna work? Because that's all you seem to do, everything I come up with, yeah. you put down. Yeah. Well that's one thing, he's negative, right, I don't know why, I don't okay. know why he is. What well, else? He messes me about, I get him concert tickets for stuff, and, yeah. and you say, oh, I didn't bother going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is annoying. You come in, you know, five minutes to go with tracks that need editing. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. little bag, yeah. that bag that was free. Yeah, you got a free bag today, an yeah. XFM little rucksack thing. Yeah. yeah. You were like, oh, what's this, what's this rubbish? Yeah. Ricky said, I'll have it, they're great. You yeah. said, no, I want it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's so, free, I need it. Yeah. Um, I'll give that as a well, gift or something. So, so, I mean, I think on reflection, Steve is probably a little bit more annoying than me. Mm. <laughs> I, I won't go that far. <laughs> You are, you are annoying. If I had to go away for a week somewhere, yeah. if it was a quiet place- well, You are again, aren't you? That's two orders you had this week, this year, I mean. If it was a busy place, I'd probably go with you, cos people, do you know what I mean, staring at me all the time and that if I'm walking around with Steve. <laughs> 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 Play a record, 
No, I'm just... <laughs> Can I draw up a list of reasons I don't like you, Carl? Just being honest. Well, I'll tell you, because the list of reasons I don't like you is incredibly long. It's getting longer. It's the same. Do you want another snack? Okay. Oh, I dear. genuinely, I, I really, it does frustrate me that I don't get any allowance it for being count count as a disability. Well, it does count. No, it doesn't. It's not a disability being six foot seven. But there how is. can you explain, for instance, you know, travelling on a bus you, or a coach? There's some the things I can't uh, um, people look at, I've, I've seen people stare at you, um, but they stare at me because I've been on the telly. Wasn't that a disability? Are that p people being recognised? Yes, but you could avoid that by not being on the telly. It's your choice. This yeah. is my point. It's your choice. Yeah. It's the same okay. as the big fat people. It's their yeah. choice. It's a different sort of stare, isn't it? I've been there. Yeah. When, you know, the sort of stare that you get in the sort of stare. The sort of stare well, so obviously, get. I'm gonna... Sorry, Steve, but I'm gonna, you know, follow up this inquiry. What do you mean, Carl? No, so I'm just saying it's more of a stare of, of fear than, <laughs> like, with you, the go, oh, it's him. Yeah, go on. Whereas with you, it's more like... Jeez. <laughs> Where's the monkey news? Yeah. Um, before we, uh, carry on with anything, I should just tell you, we're, we're on the subject of emails. There's one emailer we're always looking forward to hearing from. Dickers! Richie Anderson! Anderson. Dicky Docky Doo! Richard Anderson! Thanks for emailing. He's, and, uh, my, uh, he's my biggest fan He's now. one of the biggest he fans. He absolutely loves me. But, not afraid to offer some constructive criticism. Go on, That's the great said. thing about Dicky. And from Anders this week, he says, Ricky, I'm lazy, I talk nonsense, I'm badly organised, and I believe in ghosts. Can I have a job working on your show? <laughs> um, <laughs> possibly, uh, Anders, maybe send in a CV. Or email a CV. He's got a little bit of all of us in that, hasn't exactly. he? Oh, I'll ask you if he's a goggle-eyed freak, Steve. All right, calm down. Well, no, I didn't no, mean there's no need to get insulted. No, I didn't necessarily no mean you. No did need I? to get nasty. Well, well so I was thinking about that actually, Steve. Oh God. <laughs> Just talking of of the old uh, what? What? Talking of the what? No. Do you know, like? This better be good. No, you don't have that many girlfriends and that. What, what do you mean, Carl? Why are we on this? I wasn't- I was defending you in the whole monkey discussion. Come on, what's oh, your point? No, what's your point? What's your point? No, what's the point? What's the point? I just was thinking... <sighs> if there was an infinite number of Steves? <laughs> <laughs> you're an odd, you, you know, you're an odd-looking fella. Ah! Come on, Carl, get to the- No, you know I know that. Quick. I've told you that loads of times. What do you mean, you know I know that? Well, there's no point pretending anymore. <laughs> Steve, I'm- I'm flabbergasted. But also, you don't like spending money. Huh? He's mean and weird looking! Valentine's Day. No. <laughs> I'm gonna- oh. Are you sort of, oh. uh, oh. Oh. you know- You've got to love him though, haven't you? What- what are you happier with? The fact that no girls like you enough, right? <laughs> this is meant- this is really mental! Or, are you happy because you don't have to spend any money on a card for someone? Which a little from column A, a little from column B. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have let's have more monkey news. What well, have we got? No, we've got a we've got so much honest. to get into this show. Insults. We don't stupidity. need the insults. I think we've got enough. We don't need the insults. Yeah, there's no more insults. No what more insults. What me with Carl is you know he's been planning that. No, I haven't. I, I was well, I was thinking about it on the way in because Valentine's Day is coming up and I'm not a big fan of it. <laughs> right. Condoms. You bought your girlfriend a box of condoms for Christmas. I don't think you can ever go at me. <laughs> to no, be fair. No, but I don't just treat her on Valentine's. I'm always. Do you know what I mean? You don't even treat her on Valentine's. <laughs> you don't even treat her at Christmas or on her Hang birthday. On when do you treat Hang her? Hang on a minute. Why the cotton picking minute there? Oh, uh, why I order. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. What was that? <laughs> Tiffany Dog. I treat your girlfriend better than you, <laughs> and I've only met her twice. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Wilberton, uh, hello, it's Dr. Hanrahan. Um, Barry Sheen has just passed away and you go, oh dear. Um, yeah, bad news and good news. Um, do you want his face or? <laughs> do you want his face? Does Suzanne go out with you, like, for charitable reasons? <laughs> I love the fact that she encourages you. Oh, uh, she, she was saying about Tom Cruise and I was like, oh. You know, she said, you know, he's not a bad looking fella or whatever. So, well, what she's saying is, Carl, is there any chance you could go and get a different face? Maybe something like Tom Cruise would yeah, be good. Yeah, but then, then I was saying, right, first of all, he's got to be dead and he's not. <coughs> but if he was, and you had that done, would you feel like... People were looking at you something? on the tube. Well, no, like, say if the people who made Mission Impossible said, well, we want to do a third one. 
<laughs> would I then, would I be in my right to say, well, I don't want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. I don't mean to be <laughs> offensive, Carl, but your girlfriend could do a lot better than you. <laughs> I don't know what he's thinking. I love the idea this whole conversation about you with Tom Cruise's face and then get off in a film. But why, okay. why does she have conversations like this with you? There was no on last night. <laughs> There's no on the telly. I on the love chat. it. Uh, what should we talk about? What about uh, getting a new face? <laughs> oh dear. Oh, was, oh, that cartoon. Um, if you don't know what Carl looks like, there's a cartoon that was in last week's heat, isn't it, that I drew it on the website. What's, what's it going for now? Bid? I think it's at about, uh, 225 quid at the moment. And what do they have to do to bid for it? Uh, just, just email in and I'll pass it on to the website people. I know why Heat put it in. It's cause the editor, Boyd Hilton, looks a little bit like you, doesn't he? Sort of my ugly brother. <laughs> he's probably listening and he says nice things about you. Yeah, he can still say nice things, but I bet he knows deep down. You know if you're good looking or not, don't you? <laughs> Come on, Steve. Steve. I mean, what it's do you going, think? It's going, this is going, <laughs> this is going crazy you now, Carl. I don't know, you, you're just, the insults are flying left, right and centre. You've got no limits. You've just gone crazy, you've just gone wild. You're swatting around just because you look like Tom Cruise. I think it's because he's been hanging out with Christian O'Connell. Yeah. And they're both thinking, yeah, we're- A Co couple of media players. Yeah. Too big for their boots. Yeah, not scared. Although he's scared of Christian. No, he's terrible. He's terrible. scared of Christian in here because he's not allowed to do monkey news. No. Because well, yeah. Christian wants to do it. He's scared of him. I'm not saying that, right? <laughs> Christian. <laughs> By the way, Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9. So, a few more shows. And I, I, I hope Sony are happy. Mm. I should encourage. You know, we've only been radio, you know, a couple of years. Exactly. So you encourage young, ta you encourage young talent yeah. like you. Yeah. Instead of giving it to Radio One and Radio Two mm. and the old war horses. We just had a quick email. I wonder if you can answer this. It's James from NW1. He says, "Ricky, is Carl going to be on this week's show? Please let me know, as I may listen if he's not." <laughs> Um, oh, sadly, he is here. Oh I mean, dear. people are already turning against you, Carl, because they've seen what's happened. Yeah. I think they've probably realised that we've I think we gave you too much. Them. I think, exactly, I think we've got a spoiled sort of kid in our hands. It's sort of like, you know, we, we knew, we knew how bad he was, but we were trying to sort of bring him out of his shell a little bit. Yeah. Encourage, you've got to encourage sort of, um, children like Carl. Well, yeah, exactly. To exactly. sort of fend for themselves. Mm. Um, but, uh, I like the fact that Dickie Anderson had that wonderful, Ran. It, I mean, it was an articulate email. It was quite long, and he must have typed it immediately. I'm thinking because he's a fan of the show and he, he thinks I'm a you know a genius. We need a PA, sure, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Do you reckon he'd come and work for us? Um, well, he can't be any worse than what we've already got. <laughs> I don't um, know. You know. So there you go. Then we're giving up. We're giving up radio. We're going to concentrate on television. Carl's going to probably go back to what your little. Just doing your well, sound. The thing I won a silver for at the Sony's. Funny that, mm. isn't it? Oh, you won a silver, did you? I got a silver, yeah. Oh, for yeah. Doing, what was that for, for doing the proper job that I do here in the week. Well, no, no, it's two of you for a start. Yeah. Well, there's three of us. Can't even get a bronze. Now, who's the weak link? <laughs> right? <laughs> well, a bit weird, isn't it? Let's get. Let's look. Let's get, let's not argue. We haven't got many shows to do. To be fair, though, this this show is, is. I think it's more to do with the fact that you talk on this show that has brought us down. Right. I haven't said anything hardly today. No, well, this is an award-winning show, potentially. <laughs> we'll add this one in for yeah. next year. <laughs> oh. If we could just keep shtum, we might have a chance. Alright. Well, coming up, right. Carl. Let's put it behind us. Okay. Let's draw a line under it. Well, Here we are, then. We're back. XFM 104.9. Carl had to leave early last week, but, um, you can you stay to the end this week, mate? Or... Yeah. Yeah? You don't, you don't need another holiday. Oh! Oh, he's started already. I mean, you Steve's know, made I... you look like a bit of a twat already. And <laughs> it's only five past one. But the only reason you don't go on holiday is because you have to spend money. <laughs> oh, and he's gone straight back. Well, he's gone straight back. <laughs> I can't come back to that. <laughs> oh, it's just, dear. it's just uh, dynamite. It's just absolute. That was that was. Oh, the last holiday, the had, last holiday Steve had, he, he sort of found a third world country so he could live like a Ooh. king for a week. It was Cuba, wasn't it? Going to Cuba, amazing. You can leave. We can almost rule the place. <laughs> if it weren't for Castro, I'd have been in charge. Kind of cash <laughs> I was flashing around. <laughs> they do, they do anything for a dollar over there. It's extraordinary. Literally, I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Definitely, and I went to Kenya so, before so, that. So he thought to the prostitute, said no. Mm. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well it was two dollars, I mean I'm not made of money. <laughs> well, we went, I went out with a drink with Carl in the week and uh, 
we went to uh, a restaurant, didn't we, Carl? Good night. And we sat there, and next to me, when Carl came, next to me was, uh, um, what's his name? Ross Kemp. And, uh, he was sitting there, and I saw Carl, and I, I tapped him on the shoulder, Ross Kemp, and I, was, uh, and I pointed to Carl and him, and I said, it's nice to see you two back together again. Nice. And Carl was horrified. But Carl didn't know that I'd already spoken to him before Carl arrived. Yeah, so yeah, was, yeah, I thought yeah. it was okay. I thought I could break the ice because I'd met him before. Sure. So he just thought I was insulting him. And when in the week we were talking about his head, his little head, weren't we, Carl? And Carl suddenly stopped the conversation and said, "If I had hair, what would we be talking about now?" <laughs> I think he had enough of everyone talking about it. And he looked good though. He had his special little do. He had it sort of, you know, cropped a little bit more. I like it when he's just freshly had it done. Mm. Do you know, yeah. has, has that ever happened to you, Steve? When you, if you're somewhere, say if you sat somewhere, does someone sort of, you know, is he anyone else who you look like, or <laughs> would you say you're a bit of a one-off? <laughs> I love these two. But, I, I, <laughs> but to be <laughs> fair, <laughs> to, be, well, to be fair, uh, he seems to be having a go at me an awful lot more than I do at him. Now, I mean, he just starts it. You know, he I just starts it out I, of nowhere. I th yeah, I think I think his is sort of a get back for the way you treat him as a producer, not you know. But he's not a producer. <laughs> <laughs> if he produced the show, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a reason to criticise, but... Uh, I think this is it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I, seriously, I mean, it really winds me up though, because, you know, it started as a joke, but now it's just, it's abuse. Yeah. He got annoyed at Heat because it said Carl producer, well, not so much a producer, as just a bald mank. And he yeah. went, can they say that? Yeah. Can they say that? See, that's a magazine, an independent publication has identified what exactly it is you do. Yeah. There we go then, come on, bring it on, because here we go, he's looking at me, I know he's thinking, I no, can hear the cogs. No, I'm not, I'm not thinking anything. It's true. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that is true, never <laughs> a true word, play a record. Yeah. <laughs> me and Steve were having a little meeting yesterday, over lunch about, you know, planning stuff for the show, and, uh, Gary Kemp came up to me, started having a little chat about old times, and, uh, I went, oh yeah, as he went away, Steve said, right, think of this, he said, Rick, don't take this the wrong way, Remember that sentence, don't take this the wrong way. So there's a right way and a wrong way I could have taken this comment. He went, nodded to sort of Gary Kemp and went, he's aged better than you. I went, well how could I take that the wrong way? Yeah, it's uh, not offensive. No. Well the, the point is this, he, he does, because he didn't know me twenty years ago, so he's actually saying, Rick, don't take this the wrong way, he looks better than you do. Yeah, well he does. But why say that, Carl? What? Did you really say that? Yeah, although, can I just get just backtracking for a second? I love the fact you said you bumped into Gary Kemp and you reminisced about old times. What old times did you share with Gary well, no, Kemp? Well, no, he came up and said, did we drop the pops together? And I went, no, I did razzmatazz. He said, oh, we did razzmatazz. I think he was thinking, had he ever met me before? But he, he, he hadn't, because we hadn't, that's what I meant. Yeah. 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 And, uh... But if you had to make an objective <laughs> analysis... I, I wouldn't, I think that's out of order. Sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, you're always slagging me off, but apparently no, you, you no, can't no, do, well, you can't make a value judgment on something else. No. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do <laughs> that. Well, because you're, you know, you're morally all over the place. You don't know, you, you, know, no, you don't know where I'll you're coming or going. Yeah. Believe it. Sure, yeah. you should hear what I say about you, behind your back. So, are you, would you say you're better looking now than you were? Or? <laughs> than I'm what? W would you say you're better looking now than you were? Than I was when? Well, like, like, you know, have you aged well? Yes. You've aged well. Yeah, I've kept my looks. Oh. <laughs> 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 bit of Dando? Bit of Evan Dando, this would be lovely, yes. Look for sunshine. Now, it's intriguing to me because here's a film called Freaks, featuring real life freaks, and you're sort of a bit nonplussed by it. Just because it wasn't, because it's built up. If you call a video Freaks, you've got to make sure that there's some good stuff on there. Yeah. What were you disappointed about, was it that? Because there was a few things on it, right? There was. A woman who said she was half man, half woman, and it's like, well, you're not, are you? It was just like she had some makeup on. I thought, well, that's rubbish. And then there was a woman who could eat using her feet. That isn't that freaky. Do you know what I mean? If she's not hungry, she looks normal. <laughs> yeah. And that's when I was thinking. <laughs> I mean, I'm not being not being right, Steve. You know, I'm not being funny. Oh, here we go. No, no, no. But I'm I'm just saying. If that woman wasn't eating and you were sat next to her. In that film, yeah, I'd probably be sort of drawn to you more than her. I'm not. I, I know you hate me saying it, but there's no point sort of pretending. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oi, Mutley, what you what are you sniggering about? That <laughs> that face. <laughs> well, you you mean there were, there were things in it that were less 
What are you saying? I'm just saying. Play a record. No. Seriously, I'll slap you. I'm gonna slap you live on air. Yeah, but you always go. I'm gonna. Sl right, I'm slapping you live oh, on air. I swear to God. Right, play a song then. Well, there's the best band in Britain, in my opinion. Big words. The darkness, growing on me. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Have you got the album? And already, they've had an argument. Yes. Well, I, I mean, I don't know whether we need to cheapen the show by discussing it, but well, I asked for a particular track. Uh, Carl is the producer, and he failed to get it for me. He's failed to get it for me. He's failed to bring it up from the record library. Completely failed in his mission. He needed to get two records, and he failed to get one of them. A 50% error rate there. Yeah, but like I said... I looked in the system, it told me what album it's on, I brought that album up. I'm busy. But, okay, so fine. Fine, you're absolutely fine then, that's no problem. You know, it, once again, it, that's, a, that's a great excuse, Carl, brilliant. The show has been ruined, it's been partially ruined, but you've got a bit of an excuse. Alright, I didn't make a big deal out of it when mm. you said, oh, and whilst you're down there, get us a new 50 cent single. I never, I never said, why you don't get the new 50 cent single. I asked you if 50 cent single was lying around. If, yeah. it, if it hadn't been here, I wouldn't have worried. So I get it, yeah, I did that for you. Right. And then I come up, you say, has it got swearing in it? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know, it's five to one. You're the producer! You're the producer, it's the brand new single, I thought it'd been lying around in the XFM office anyway. But I don't, I don't have time to sit around listening to music. Sure, well, yeah. Right? I know that you have, now you've got an iPod that can hold 7,500 songs, I don't know when you're gonna get around to loading all them on, but, I haven't got the time. Sure. Busy, busy. Yeah. Fine, right. okay. No, no, that's, that's a perfect excuse, Carl. Well done, mate. Right. I just hope that I never have to depend on you in a real emergency. How did you meet your girlfriend? <laughs> through work. <laughs> what, through her work? <laughs> what, you, you, you found out and said you- work to have the same place. Oh, you're right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. You're quite an enigma, aren't you? Could you give us more on that? <laughs> at work. You met her at work. What, she came in selling sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> She was going through the bins outside. What, what do you mean you're married? Why are you having an attack on me? You're I'm the one who's sad and lonely. No, oh, not. he's done you again! He's done yeah, you again! Yeah, but what I thought was interesting was Matt. I just scratched at him and he just went mental. Yeah, no, It's like a bear caught in a trap. It's, it's funny, isn't it? You'll never learn. Carl. No, I was just interested to find out what the story was because it might be a really romantic story. Well, it's, it's not. All right, jeez. I, I mean, love the fact he doesn't want to talk about, about his you, love I, affair. I, I was thinking about you in the week and like... <laughs> Does it worry you? I mean, you sort of joke about it now, and we're talking about it in the office, you know, like, oh, is, is Steve really touchy about the way he looks? And oh, what's this? Where's that come from? He's and done it again. He's done you again. I was walking home the other night, and I was thinking about it. And do you <laughs> worry that when you're old, you will be on your own? Oh, <laughs> you did start it, though, didn't you? Well, Carl, I'm glad you brought this up. <laughs> because, no, no, because, I, I mean, for me, you know, a, a lightweight, frothy entertainment show <laughs> on XFM on a Saturday afternoon is exactly the place <laughs> <laughs> where I want to discuss uh, the desperate, lonely future that's uh, inevitably coming my way. Oh, God. I'll I tell you what will cheer you up and forget yeah. all that. A bit of embrace. <laughs> oh, one of the most hated bands. Oh. But, but, yeah, I don't know what we're talking about there. So we've got the film thing <laughs> going. We were talking the about- film. What were you talking about earlier about glasses as well and Steve taking his glasses off? What was that? What are you saying that in front of him now for? Was it- oh, was it an insult? It wasn't really an insult. Carl, what were you up to? No, what was it? I genuinely don't remember. I- I genuinely don't remember. Well, I just- right, Steve, I'm not- I'm not having a go. Right? Um, just saying our people, um, it's a bit weird that you've got glasses because you've got a good pair of eyes on you. Right? <laughs> That- that isn't an insult. What were you talking about, though? What was it- why did it you- It was the fact that people who wear glasses always look a bit weird without them on. It's- it's like, you know, they- they were- they should- they should wear glasses. I- okay. Why did we get round to this? What was we talking about? What were we talking about? I don't know. I don't- I don't know. I don't know what that was. It sounds like an insult, even if it wasn't no, intended as well. it wasn't. It, it sounds wasn't. like an insult, Carl. <laughs> it does, yeah. No, it wasn't. I should be like to punch you every time you insult me, no? No, but I'm not- oh, I'm doing it. I'm gonna give you a dead arm. Look, Steve, it's, it's, it's you- like an you always- Even if it wasn't, you intended it to be one. Well, what you- Oh! <gasps> that was real. Play a record. Yeah. Yeah, but it's that's mad. Every time you insult me from that's now mad. Oh, is this the cardigans? Great. Brilliant. I didn't yeah. even say anything. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel better. I can enjoy the rest of the show. Because act actors are often very quite handsome people, but yet they're always quite yeah, we obnoxious. Yeah, we are, we are, we are, we are. No, I mean they're normally quite obnoxious. For it. Again, you know, you're a good example <laughs> of that. Mm. And yet, yet, I think it must be the small man complex. That's what makes them so obnoxious and so kind of desperate for attention. 
Didn't right. realise it before. Steady on. Because I was like tower above everyone. You do, don't you? I'm, uh, for people who don't know who are listening, I'm six foot seven inches tall. That's, 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 that's high. Yeah. That's and, big. and, and, um, for people who've never seen him, he doesn't hold it well. It's not like he's a sort of handsome athlete, is it, Carl? He's a bit of a, what, what do you call him? A t Carl, don't answer it. No, 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 no. Don't get drawn into that. No, no, you, no, know, no, you know the game he's playing. No, 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 no. Do you know yesterday when you were in the office? Yeah. You did a little move <laughs> and it reminded me of Blakey. <laughs> I thought, I thought oh, I hate you, Gervais. Oh, I hate you, Pilkington. That sort of stance. Yeah, but even he was, he held it a little bit better, didn't he? Because he was a man, you know, yeah. he had a big coat and everything, a peak cap. But, uh, yeah. I can't believe you. Like, I've not suffered enough from being freakishly tall. Now, till my best buddies, yeah. live on radio, are just- It's not know. just the height, though, is it? It's the <laughs> posture and the face and everything. But it's got your places, hasn't oh. it? <laughs> no. How do you mean he's got me places? I think I think people give you a bit more of a chance in in your career and stuff. Cause it's like, oh. well, yeah, stacking shelves because <laughs> I can reach to a high level. <laughs> Um, oh, you know, um, um rubbish. that's rubbish, Carl, those places. You, you, I'm ashamed to give them away. Carl, you know our mate Johnny, he's a Doctor Who fan. Yeah. Do you remember, um, he bought, um, uh, the Doctor Who magazine, um, and, uh, he went, um, to the toilet, and Steve got post-it notes and put geek on every page, and Johnny opened it on the tube, right, and it had geek and everything, and Johnny bought in the, the new Doctor Who magazine, I think this week's or this month's, right, and they've, they've, um, they've done the perfect Doctor Who fan. Right, what the geek is right, and it looks exactly like Steve. All right, don't have a go, really. It does, and, he went, and I, 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 I'm going to try and put it on the website. It's amazing. It's got your hair, glasses. It stands like you. It's sort of dressed like you, and it's only and it's, it's hilarious. And he's he's he was. I mean, I'm insulting you now. It's, it sounds like an insult, but if you'd see it, you'd laugh. Play. A... Well, rockbusters, right? Yeah. All right, here we go. Just a little um, bit annoyed. Just uh, three clues. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Energy in this show, aren't we? Well, I'm just, I can't get over that insult. I'm just a little. No, angry. we did though. Just, <laughs> just come out of nowhere, Ricky. Ricky, come out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting an insult. No, 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 but no I think no, there was a sense of camaraderie on this. No, I'll bring just emailing Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. What are we doing? I'm just, I'm just reading out the clues. Should we put this, let's put this one in for the Sony Awards. Let's put this show in for the Sony Awards. Play a song, Carl, because I need to discuss things with him. I've talked before about him taking it down. Get this down to three minutes, it'd be a great show. Busters in a minute. XFM. To a yeah, certain extent. I'm just thinking, if I was to meet Steve in a restaurant, yeah, right, I'd, 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 nothing I'd, untoward going on. We're just hanging out. We're no, just having a chat, just yeah, having a normal sure. night out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Who's paying? Because I mean, <laughs> is it expensive? Right. Go Dutch, go Dutch, go Dutch. <laughs> I mean, right. So, I, I I say to you, I'll I'll see you at eight, right, in yeah. this in this restaurant. I turn up at the door. It's a bit of a posh place, mm -hmm. right. Uh, so he's uh, Steve Merchant in. Yeah. And the waiter sort of goes, I I I don't know. What does he look like, right? And, uh, Where's he from? Just a f little French fella. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, what's he look like? So I th the th thing I pick up on first, tall, tall lad. Tall, yeah. And then he goes, oh, well, you know, we got lots of tall people in, yeah. right? And I go, oh, big eyes, <laughs> big eyes. Yeah. And then he go, yeah, he's over there. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I mean, you can have dinner and you can buy me dinner. I'm not sure you're going to get anywhere with me. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, what he hasn't said is, well, um, he gets frustrated because we have to go from restaurant to restaurant for something I can eat. But the reason we've only got about three restaurants to choose from are that, because he doesn't want to spend more than a fiver at lunchtime. At lunchtime? Mm. If I was going out of an evening, you'd spend a decent amount of wallop. But mm. lunchtime, Would why would I spend- you'd be happy to spend twenty quid on lunch. Imagine that every single day. There's no one out there who's eating lunch, twenty quid a day on lunch. It's crazy. You don't need that much food at lunchtime. Cause we, I know what ha happens. You go in there, you have some kind of, you know, tiger in curry for lunch. You're asleep by one thirty. We're trying to work, we're trying to write TV shows, and you're dozing off like one of those giant anacondas that's just <laughs> eating a sheep and is slowly digesting it. It takes like three weeks. He doesn't eat car, he does not like the spare. He, he, he'll go, he'll walk a mile out of his way to get a sandwich for- Having an argument over that 50p that time. <laughs> No, again, here's the situation, Carl. Yeah. I lent you 50p and you decided you weren't going to pay me back. It should be to my discretion if I say, don't worry about it, Carl. You should offer me the 50p, go, there's that 50p I owe you, and I'll go, don't worry about it, Carl. But you didn't even do that. Nah, it's the way that you were, like... I said, where's my 50p? Crackling. You went, oh, you don't need that. That's not your decision to I, didn't, I didn't say that. I said, I, I, I don't think I've got it at the moment, or whatever. Rubbish. And you're going through my pockets and that. Rubbish. 50p. 
ridiculous. You've just given him a keg of beer for free, haven't you? Well, let's, let's not go over it again. I'll tell you, you're gonna go along later to the Live 8 gig and you're probably gonna see some bands that can make an effort to entertain you, but oh, if you want entertainment, Rick, you know it. Go on. There's only one person to book. Go on. Me. If, if you, you know, you have perhaps yeah. something to do, um, uh, because uh, I mean, I'm, I mean, obviously a top well, DJ I, I, on the radio, yeah. but where my, where I really come into my own is DJing in any kind of club Well, you told me you were DJing, uh, I didn't go to it, uh, DJing at a, a party, and you said the place was rocking. The place was roaring. And I loved it. Uh, Carl just, just said he was there and they weren't. Well, that's nonsense, Carl, they because you know so very well that when I was put, I'd put on a tune, they'd cheer. Yeah, but it, it was late on in the night, they would have done that, whatever you put on. That's nonsense. No, they, they, were they were happy and everything. I'm not saying they weren't having a good time. It was your party. It was it was all right. But they weren't going mental like you're you're sort of making up. They were definitely going mental. No, when I put on the no. proclaimers, they could not believe their no. luck. No. <laughs> they they would have walked a thousand miles. <laughs> was it good though? Was he? Were they really? What were they doing? Were they dancing? They were dancing. Were they? It's dancing and that, but they weren't sort of cheering, going you know more and all that at the end. What's about? Oh, Take wow. on me came on. They, they, the big, the big cheer went up. Oh, I don't I've, know. I believe I've been there, done it, Steve. I've I've been the DJ as well. And oh, I, it might be jealousy. It I might think be like professional a, jealousy there. Like a, yeah. I think it's because my fortunes are on the up and these are on the down. You know, we all know famously that he had uh, making, making music, music didn't his happen. DJ outfit. Didn't happen. Did, didn't. I did enough. I just wanted to do enough to pay for the equipment, <laughs> and I did. And that was that. But I don't like crowds, do I? <laughs> Carl, it was you that worked out the maths. And worked out I was 28 because they just worked out I'm 27. You are 27. No way. Yeah, I told I asked you, didn't I? And yeah, I said because, no, but what I sort of questioned was I said, well, if you're 27 today, that means last week you were 26. Well, well done. Yeah, that's um, irrelevant. So, so therefore you assumed that I must be 28 then. Yeah. Whereas I, I assumed you were using, you know, your knowledge of maths no, such as it is. I, I wouldn't do that. No, sure, sure. Wow. I, I actually got lost in that conversation because I didn't, I genuinely didn't know what he meant with, would mean last week you were 26. I don't I know what that <laughs> I meant. I don't know what it meant. Wow. Well, it is Steve's birthday. Well, and he would have been 26 last week. Ah. <laughs> so <laughs> tells you, uh, you genuinely frightened me because it's those staring eyes. There's nothing behind him. It's this little bald head. Looks like Davros looking at me. Genuine, just genuine fear on his face when he enters into a conversation with another human but what, being. What bit don't you understand? If he was, if he's 27 today, he would have been 26 last week, and he doesn't look 26. He didn't look 26 last week. He looks older than 28 today. You've started on, on his birthday, you're still having a go at him. Carl, I don't look like the kind of hot stud that I actually am, but face facts, that's the <laughs> truth, mate. Yeah, get live with, with it. it. Get with live the program, with it. jeez. Um, I had some exciting news this week, Carl. You'll be pleased yeah. to find out. Um, I, I, I'm worried that you might get a little bit jealous, because it's obviously going to impact on your world quite strongly, because I know you think, you'd like things to be quite, the, quite, you know, samey, you'd like the status quo to be maintained, you like the fact that in the past, you know, we've had some crosswords, you know, because you've, I remember, what did you think of me when I first walked in? When I first came in on the yeah, first well, day of I don't know why you're making a big deal. Do you want to bring because it? Do you I, want I'm just being honest, though. I'm just well, being honest about a lot of people who see you for the first time sort of go, well, he's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, I love that, Steve, that you brought it up. And then you're, again. But I'm sure that wasn't what you said before. No, did he, he said before? I, yeah, well, he's well, I. He's a bit weird. Yeah, well, I, he looked at you, and uh, I knew. I could see by the look of his face. You know when, uh, when you know you, your kid, and your kid's sort of scared of something, and they go, why is your kid? And goes, oh, he doesn't like pigeons or spiders. Right. It was like that. When I saw Carl, and I brought you in, and I went, what do you think of that, Carl? I could see the look on his face that he, d he was disturbed. Sure. And then, as he said, you get used to it, don't you? Yeah, you get used to it. And, y and you have changed a little bit. Your hair's a bit smarter now, and you've got some nicer glasses and that, I think. <laughs> or I might just get used to it. <laughs> Oh, don't bring it up, Steve. Don't well, look at me like that. So you say that you think some other people in the office thought the same? Do you know that for sure? Carl. Did you discuss it? Carl. Yeah, I think I think they do, yeah. Okay, leave it there then. But not just in the office, as you walk through <laughs> the building. <laughs> oh, it's, it's worse than you ever thought. It's best if, if you leave it. Well, we're not gonna leave it. We're gonna get you on the poster. Yeah. I mainly have to see myself on videotape this morning. That's oh, I, I showed him, um, um, uh, you know, uh, the animal show I did, the show, yes. I'm doing a video, and I did behind the scenes footage, and I've got a, uh, you've seen it, haven't you? I feel a little bit of Carl on there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah it's great, yeah. it's lovely, he can't believe it, he said, is it playing slow? <laughs> he's so slow, when I come into the office, he's going, alright. It, that's how you I'm talk. I'm head as well. I look like I'm looking into a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not happy with it. 
I just think that if we're willing to 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 uh, <laughs> if Ricky's willing to use his celebrity profile for the sake of the show, yeah. I'm willing to look like a, you know, let's say a fairly handsome kind of cool customer. I think at least the very least, Carl, is that you appear on there as well. Yeah. You could dress. Are up you smart. are you worried that you'll look the worst out of all three of us? Uh, who am I standing next to? I'm next to Steve. <laughs> I'm, pr I'm fairly confident. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way it's so predictable. You pull the string because you know what it is. It's <laughs> you pull the string. <laughs> um. Anyway, I just it's, thought I wanted to say, really. It is tragic. What's tragic? What, what did you want me to say about that song? Just your opinion. Your own opinion was fine. It's, it's in fact, in fact, your own opinion is better than anything I could really hope for. W without doubt, whenever I ask you a question, you constantly surprise us. Yeah, you're, it's it's wonderful. So only ever carry on telling the truth, carry on saying exactly what's on your mind, and I think this could become a great. You're like a man who was frozen <laughs> in Victorian era <laughs> and has been reawoken <laughs> and he's kind of discovering the world. Some <laughs> things make sense, other things yeah. don't. It's beautiful, it's as really opposed nice. to one that was made in a castle in Victorian times, like <laughs> Steve. Oh, that's just. Oh, I've joined in with Carl. I can't believe it. I'm oh, sorry. On my side. Yeah, no, it was irresistible, though, wasn't it? Mm. I'm really sorry. Should we play a record? Yeah. So, we were talking about. Should we play a record? Is that link too long already I'm before already we bored. actually got to something? I'm already bored. Carl, we've got to get to something. We've got to do Carl, something. Why don't you contribute something? You've been silent. Now, that is scraping about. What about? <laughs> really like, is, we're in trouble. Oh, no. Oh, we're failing. Who can we, who can we bring on that surefire? Always delivers audio snappy. dynamite. Yeah, Carl, the big guns. <laughs> Come on, Carl. No, I was just thinking, there is nobody else who looks like Steve. <laughs> He's done ya. That's outrageous. <laughs> Although, to be honest with you, that insult has resurrected things. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Shut up. They got two monkeys, right? And Don't stop. Oh, because they've seen the owners. They've seen the owners with guns and what have you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 that sounds fun. So they had a, bit of, had a bit of a shoot off. Yeah. That's how that, that's how they sorted it out. And who won? I think it was George, the one called George. Right. So they had, I think they had seventeen kids. The farm's still running. So that's that's like the the last little monkey news there. Good little Rick, happy ending to that one. If you were to rub your nipple against his lips while I held him down. Right, come off it now. Come on. No, I'm not doing Bruce Springsteen, Thunder Road, it, last track on Next of Hens with you, Steve. <laughs> You can check this all out on the webcam. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I got my fingers. Get his arm out the way. Get the arm out the this way. This happened on this scum. Is, it's, it's happening again, Steve. What's happening? It's going all wrong. Yeah. We're talking rubbish. Are we? Yeah. We should have played two in a row. He's having a go, isn't he? Blimey. Can I just kiss and make up with Carl? No, that is. No, let me just let me just kiss my kiss. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't. <laughs> next, then next week it'll be the same again. What it doesn't mean it? anything. It's, it's like this, saying sorry. Lips. Oh, on the lips. Go on. Oh, he's God. like. Yep. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I've never- Carl has oh, gone a absolute shade of purple, straining not to have merchants- There's no point, Steve. What no. There's no point. No, just shake. Just shake and make up. <laughs> <laughs> shake what, Rick? <laughs> there you go. All friends, sit down. This- that's lovely. That's a lovely moment. So there's Steve Merchant, with funny glasses on, in this place, horror, and he's walking round. Mm. Do you think he scared people, Carl? I've- I've set this question out, haven't I? <laughs> I know- I've, I know, I've, I've, lo I've loaded the question I know I'm the answer you're fishing for. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, do you just want to have a dig at me? Cause it's <laughs> coming up to two o'clock, and you've not really put a lot of, uh, effort in today, slagging me off. He's a bit on purpose. No, he doesn't do it on purpose. He's, he's, he's just- he's just an honest northerner and he can't lie. He's like George Washington, but without the wooden teeth. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think your heart's in it anymore either, Carl. I was alright today, but Steve's really dragged me down. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's. let's wait, 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 I just need to know why. No, do you know, like, yeah. when people are being miserable around you. Yep. I, I was full yep. of beans when I came in. Yep, 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 yeah, but you yep. got to remember last week, you were really miserable, and that really wound me up. Yeah, because he was dumb so to do stuff. Because, right? you know, he'd been let down, and they were worried about yeah, the next show. You were in a terrible mood. Yeah, yeah. look at me like you were. Songs. I wasn't, like, going off oh, and lying on the settee, looking ill, <laughs> talking in that voice. Oh, he's done you yeah. again. I said, I said, just now, being quite friendly. Yeah, Carl, Steve. Carl, have you ever tried to get into the monarch for free? Because I'll be honest, mate, it's not going to happen for you. Come out with me, mate, you got to quit off. <laughs> all right. Oh. Uh, when you can get in places in Camden for free. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's done you. He's um, so ungrateful. Really? Yeah. Because I can't remember a time my dad bought me anything. It's always my mum who bought it, and my dad would give her the money. Yeah. You got Ricky who's lost his go kart. <laughs> You've had a video bought for you. You're still not happy. 
<laughs> I've seen selfish. <laughs> 150 quid? Yeah. What, and gift vouchers? Yeah. To spend at the same places? Mm. I'd have to say, though, I mean, it's not a very inventive gift, is it? It's Whoever a came up thought, with it, though. It's a lovely thought. It's wonderful to have 25 pounds that I can, I can only spend in two places I never go in. But, uh, no, no, I'm not, so I'm not looking a gift horse in the mouth. Any I'm not anything. looking a gift horse in the mouth. It, it is a treat. He, My sp thought, he spoke to Jonathan Ross like he was a normal person. Uh, from someone whose dad buys him a spade for Christmas, I thought you'd be grateful. <laughs> It's, it's one of them things, isn't it? Like I've said before, when you first see something, it's a bit of a shock. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like the elephant man or whatever. <laughs> yeah. First time you see him, it's that sort of, oh, look at that. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you saw Steve? No, I'm not being funny. Do you remember the, 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 the first? Yeah, but I've said this before. It's always, <laughs> then you get used to how people look and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm gonna pass. I'm, you have to play a record. No, but. Because I see Steve's <laughs> It, do you know what I mean? It's brilliant. I'd like to rent you out to people. See me, I'm different. <laughs> I would happily leave him now in the bottom of the cupboard. Mm. <laughs> Until quiz the scale electrics. <laughs> Until the old pub quiz night, <coughs> when there's no one else who will have you on the team. Sure. Oh, and some of you want to be your best mate. Done him again. Huh? My, yeah, where's his mum and dad then, Carl? Mm. Yeah? In yeah. Bristol. Yeah. Do you, do you know what Steve said when he saw that, Carl? Go on. He said, it has captured Carl. Mm. What do you mean? Well, you just look utterly gormless. <laughs> in the picture. It's, it's captured you brilliant. You know how, like, a good photographer can do that? You can capture the essence of someone. <laughs> That's good stuff. Absolute twaddle. Absolute rubbish. When all that oh, goes, oh yeah. don't talk right. shit, Carl. So, anyway, it's going <laughs> So oh, Carl! Is, you're talking so much shit again! So you must know that's not true! There's so no way! Uh, you're talking rubbish again. This oh. is such shit! This is such <laughs> <laughs> What are you, what are you <laughs> talking about? <laughs> oh! Oh! Christ! Right, calm down, we haven't got much time left. Oh, God! What do you mean this is- Forget it! No! Forget don't it. forget it! <laughs> Carl, do not press that! Switch the record off! Switch the record off! America for the on the Enterprise. It was all about space. And there was one there was one question that answer three right, and it was who was the first one into space? Yuri Gagarin. Um, who's doing that? And then the third question was um how how much bigger than the moon is the sun? Is it twice as big or four times as big? And this one went four times as big. Went correct. It's not. It's hundreds it's of times bigger. More I can't yeah. believe. Uh, can someone look that up on the internet? And how many times bigger is the sun than the moon? It's not four times. It's it's huge. It's like beach ball to a P type dimension. Which DJ was oh. it? Do you remember on Virgin? I can't remember, but it was the one on sort of about eleven o'clock. Oh, 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 Wouldn't want to be him. Right yeah, he's embarrassed himself, he's embarrassed isn't he? Himself. Well, we do quizzes. We never get anything wrong. That's true. Enough. During that track, I'm I'm chilling out. I'm loving it, aren't yeah. I? Carl goes, do you know how baguettes came about? <laughs> do you know how baguettes come about? I went, go on, and Steve went, no, save it. Wait a minute, though. I'm thinking, Rick. People are going to be desperate to know the answer to that. Why don't we play some uh, ads and some music and stuff? It's like a cliffhanger. Exactly. How did ba baguettes come about? Whatever he says is going to be good. Stay isn't tuned it? to XFM to find out. Hives. I hate to say I told you so. So I love that sort of stuff. Mm. That and the Strokes. Well, it's so much better than this new metal rubbish, isn't it? Definitely. Now, most people think we talk rubbish on air. Yep. If they could hear the conversations Off that air. go on, I know. But um, someone just emailed in saying the sun is indeed about four hundred times bigger than the moon. Thanks for that. Uh, uh, that that DJ must have looked it up and said um, four hundred times. That can't be right. It's probably they probably it's probably a printing error. Four times. <laughs> yeah. Nothing can be four hundred times <laughs> bigger than the moon. Um, <laughs> Carl went, yeah, but uh, the sun, it's only got a million years, isn't it? I went, what? He went, on that space programme, it said that in a million years the sun will be destroyed, and he said, and then we're all shafted. <laughs> right? I went, I laughed. Steve went, no, it's okay, by then we'll be on another planet. <laughs> no, I think that's yeah, true, we'll have colonised right. another planet. Carl went, yeah, but there'd be no sun. Steve went, well, there's other suns, which is true. Carl went, well, I went, well, yeah, ev every star is a sun. Carl went, mm, well, not, not really. <laughs> not really. Don't, don't believe that, <laughs> do you? And I went, no, it is. The sun is just a star. It's not even a particularly big star. Carl went, well, why didn't they say that instead of worrying me? <laughs> instead of worrying me. In a million years time. Yeah. I love yeah. Carl, he's been preserved, brought back to life, <laughs> and is now the ruler of the world. Just a head in yeah. a fish tank. <laughs> and he speaks like this. 
I am Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> the reason, the reason you became king of the universe, of course, is because of your fascinating French bread anecdote. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah come the on story? then. What? How? Uh, how did baguettes come about? If this is going to be someone uh, cooked a loaf a bit wrong and said oh, I can still make a sandwich out of it, <laughs> I'm going to hit you. Is that it? No, 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 no. Go on then. Um, right, Napoleon, when he was at war and that with um, Russia. <laughs> 1812, yeah. Yeah, all his soldiers were like, you know, not used to the cold weather and that. <laughs> so they said, take take some clothes in your bag with you because it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be Chilly. nippy, nippy yeah. out there. So um, they put all the clothes in the bag. Sure, do what they were told. Thought, oh, it's Napoleon for Christ's sake. No I'm room for any food. No You're food joking. Food. So could um, they make some sort of like sandwich? <laughs> no, it won't fit because I've got all the clothes. You have to take extra yeah. gear. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I can that, see where I this is going. <laughs> <laughs> is there a baguette-shaped gap <laughs> left in their holdall? They thought, let's make some bread that you can fit down your trouser leg. What? That's not true. <laughs> that's no, it's not. I read it in Euston train station. I was waiting to go back to Manchester. Where did you read these? It was on the wall in Yeah. Do you know the upper was it also <laughs> meet me here for cock fun at twelve <laughs> o'clock? <laughs> the upper cross sandwich <laughs> shop, Euston <laughs> station. It's on the wall. What do you mean it's on the wall? Do you know how it says like, <laughs> sail on at Dixon's or whatever? Yeah. Next to that there was like a bit of information, once you've read the stuff on Dixon's- Baguette information. There was- there was a big thing about <laughs> the history of the baguette. I read <laughs> it and I thought, ah. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute, no, so they, they, we got- we got to make a sandwich we can spit down our trouser leg. <sighs> But how can you march and fight with a huge piece of bread down your uh, train? Although it would be intimidating. You see them coming, you go, sacre bleu, look at the <laughs> yeah. size of them. They're, they're, they're big fellas. Well, I, I, I can't help but feel that could be a practical joke at your expense. Yeah. You do that. Well, the Earl of Sandwich. Do you Sandwich, ever question anything you read? If it's no, printed up, is that, yeah. like, fact for you then? Well, it's not funny. I mean, if they were trying to be funny, it's like, oof. it's not, is it? So it's information. Have you heard us? Things so they, you know, that's, funny that's, when that's exactly what happened with the sandwich. The Earl of Sandwich wanted somebody he could fit down his pants, <laughs> and uh, it was a, those triangle cut sandwiches wrapped in cling film were perfect. Uh, um, you might be right. You might be right. I am. Because the Cornish pasty, so they could drop it down the mines, isn't it? Is they, it? Yeah, they wrapped it up in a atheist. We don't believe in ghosts, anything like that, anything supernatural. We're we're very we're, we're followers of James Randi, a, a genius of our times, but Carl. Saw something that proved us wrong. I'd like Carl to tell you what this proof was, what he saw on, and uh, look at him. Go on then. It was tell on. Us. It was on Wednesday night. Yeah. I was watching. I, you see, the problem is I didn't get the full story, so you could pick holes out of it. Sure, 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 sure. And unlike your usual investigations into the supernatural, <laughs> which are it was called. Can I just say what the program's called? Mr. Exorcist. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> So <laughs> Sounds like bit, an academic work to me. Yes. The bit that I caught, I, I just flicked it over, uh, uh, sort of seeing what's on the telly and I thought, oh, Exorcist, I've seen it, but there's nothing else and I watch it and then I realised it wasn't the same thing. Yeah. I thought, oh, I'll have a bit of this. And, um, there was an old woman and, and a daughter and as far as I, I was aware, the, the bit I picked up on, they were saying, oh, you know, it's, it's dreadful and, and unless you've been through it, you know, you've had ghosts in your house and that, you really don't know what it's like. Yeah, sure. And the main thing that seemed to be getting them down was the fact that the budgie was getting stressed. The budgie was getting stressed? Because animals can sense the, the other side, can't oh, okay. they? Can they? Yeah. Okay. So, um... And how was that manifesting itself? You don't know. What was the budgie doing? I think it, it, it just wasn't happy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> did it? Did it? Did it explain that to people, or no, how did know, it express I mean, that? Bud budgies are known for being chirpy, aren't they? I see. And it wasn't chirpy. It, it, well, it, you know, it normally swings on its little perch and that. And it's just depressed because it was right. possessed. It was yeah. just sat around in its uh, in its pajamas. <laughs> so, so <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. Come on, so, Steve. Yeah, Come on, Steve. You're making this a mockery. So <laughs> the budgie was depressed because he could sense the ghost. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then, so yeah. this yeah. Um, yeah. this guy, yeah. this Mister uh, Exorcist, came yeah. round. Was that his name? Yeah. Okay. Was he? A, was he a, a priest or something? Yeah, he might have been. Yeah, yeah. Like a, a did he, did he have a, did he have a, like a black coat with a little white collar? Yeah. That's that's usually the. He had his coat on, so you couldn't tell. I'm sure. Okay. But so he, he came round and he sort of did his thing, yeah. and um and then. And was he trying? Was he trying? Was he trying to exorcise the budgie? Um, no, no, the, the, the ghost. House. Right. The so house, so yeah. it wasn't that the budgie had a demon or anything. No. Out. Okay. No, so this wasn't a possession, was it? This was a straightforward. It wasn't a poltergeist or anything. It was a, just a. Well, it's a haunted house. Yeah, yeah but sure. th that's the thing he was saying. He was saying you can have like your ghouls and that that aren't that bad. That aren't going to cause you any yeah. problems. Yeah, yeah. But obviously yeah, yeah. the the budgie, they've they've got weak hearts and that, haven't they? <laughs> and, <laughs> sure. So so he come on. So so, so anyway, basically he sorted it out, did whatever he did, 
And uh, the next shot you see is like the budgie making a noise and swinging it's it over the moon again. And the the old woman was like happy because she was she couldn't stressed. believe it. Yeah. And that does the priest didn't come in and go well. You should feed that bird. <laughs> Give it a bit of millet. It, it was happy. It goes right. No, See you later. No, it was a. So it's budge, I mean, budgies are. Um, my mum's got a budgie, and they, they, you know, they're fairly happy all the time, aren't they? So it's got to be something fairly yeah. odd. Right. You never see a budgie sitting down going. I feel like topping myself, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean, though? No. Do you know no. you can have, like, moody, uh, a moody dog? You can you can see a dog when it's unhappy if it's walking yeah. down the street. You can have a moody canary, can't you? And what they do is they often tell the police what you've been doing. They're known for that. Mm. Yeah. So, so um, basically... So that, for you, is proof that the supernatural exists. A bird in a cage got a little bit annoyed, <laughs> wasn't chirping as much as it normally did. Who knows why? There could have been a little draft up its... <laughs> You know, and uh, like <laughs> exactly. That's anyway, a medical term. Anyway, a man just... came in and did whatever he did. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Exorcist, though, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't, it, this wasn't any bloke off the street. This was Mr. Exorcist. Yeah, yeah. So and for you, that's the proof that there is. Um... Just because, like, if it was a, a person, you go, oh, they, they're playing up for the camera. Yeah, you know, a they'd... budgie could possibly act like that, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. You say you're saying a budgie would not be trying to. It wouldn't be trying to become famous. No, or no not like telly. not like Lassie. No, sure. It was sure. basically a show off. Yeah, or so, champion the Wonder Horse. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I think I've changed. Well, I've changed my tune, Rick. I don't know about you. I have, and I think we should play a record. I'd love to get Mr. Exorcist in. Wouldn't that be amazing? Never dabble with things you don't understand. Sorry. Like women. See what I did there? <laughs> oh, he's turned that back on me. Well, uh, I've never had this sort of. Steve was thinking he's not that ugly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Blimey, here we go. We were laughing at Carl. <laughs> Can we focus on one person at a time, Rick, please? <laughs> Let's destroy him first. Oh, God. Tell him what you said to me when that record was playing about the Jeff Cakes. He, hand, he bought some Jeff Cakes, which was lovely. He went across the road and he handed out the Jeff Cakes. And then I went, oh, thanks very much. And then what did you say? I just remember learning at school. Um, <laughs> I'm not, like, making fun of, of the illness, because it's not funny. But, um, the cure cancer. <laughs> Jaffa Cakes cure cancer? Not, not like, fully. Right. <laughs> they just go some way to help him. Yeah. Do you know, um, it'll, it'll sort of help. If, if you've got it, you can't say, right, get me a load of Jaffa Cakes. Right. But I think it sort of puts a bit of a stop to it if you haven't got it. Do you know what I mean? It's like having vitamin tablets. Is this medically proven? Should we get Dr. Fox down here to confirm that? <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I actually can't cope. You're just, play a record, play a record. Can I just, if anyone has ever survived cancer thanks to Jack and Cakes, please call him. No, but I didn't say he that. He said, and then he went, it's the orange thing in it. And then he read, he tried to read it, he said, I wonder if it's, and he tried to read out this scientific name. Farrah Munch, got ya. XFM 104.9. Well, as we promised, some feng shui. Um, what do you want to know? Ratio of wit. Yeah, it's a, it's a one of those little books that you see at the sort of like the front desk of like Waterstones or Dylan's mm. or one of those. And it's just uh, it's a little guide. It's um, uh, should I say what it is? I mean, yeah, I'm allowed, aren't I? Well. Lillian Two's little book of um, Feng Shui. And, uh, obviously, she can't go into it in depth, but it's some little. You know. Just some little sort of nuggets, I suppose. Yeah, ratio of windows. The ratio of windows to doors in your rooms should not exceed three to one. Too many windows calls all your luck to seep away. <laughs> Obviously. Hello. <laughs> uh, it is also better not to have windows on the wall opposite the door. Is that the case in your place, uh, Carl? Because you may need, may, you may need to brick that up when you get back later. <laughs> I always remember, um, I used to work nights. Yeah. Right? And it was when my brother just sort of got kicked out of the army. Yeah. I mean, mum and dad went away on holiday, so he was staying with us. <laughs> He's got to write a book, this bloke. And, you have um, got to write a book, Carl. Go on. I came back, yeah. and there was women everywhere. There was women in every bed in the house. I thought, where am I going to sleep? Had he set up a brothel? What? So, <laughs> no, it's just a bit of a, bit of a womp. That's so, impressive, though, a girl in every single bed, I, I mean. Was, he was mad. So, um, I slept on the sofa downstairs, mm. and I didn't sleep that well. Yeah. But I slept on it before when it was facing a different way. Sure. And I had a good sleep. <laughs> so for you, that's so... proved the worth of Feng Shui. Yeah, <laughs> I think there's something in it. <laughs> Did you honestly think there's something in it, though? Yeah, I do, yeah. Okay, we'll just read a few of the others, Rick. Okay, well, yeah. there's a... Just, oh, just... yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's I think, I think most people know this one. Uh, display the three-legged frog for luck. Um, look for a three-legged frog. You can buy one from any Chinese supermarket. <laughs> uh, and place it in the vicinity of your front door. 
facing inwards as if it has just come into the house. Don't place the frog facing the door! <laughs> Please! Oh, come on, people! What Think you... before you place your frog. I mean, this, this really is... I mean, but, but... What's the last page? Because that will be the most important one. Do you it? reckon? Yeah. The last one I, I, I uh, the wealth vase. Make a wealth vase and keep it hidden in your cupboard. It can be made of gold, crystal or glass. If, uh, can I just say something? If you've got a vase made of gold, you're probably alright for money anyway. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Sure, sure. But this yeah. is the wealth vase. How do you make the wealth vase? Fill it with semi-precious stones and with soil taken from a rich man's garden. So just find the soil of a rich man. <laughs> Take some soil from the- <laughs> This is like bury a piece of steak and the water will go. Yes. I, I, I have a uh, tooth of frog. This is- It's the one where with the gods. Can you find that one? Oh, where's that one? Yeah. Do you, do you, what do you, what do you make of Feng Shui, Carl? I is it something you believe in? Uh, well, like I said, I didn't sleep well on the sofa when it so was- So for you that's proof, one. proof so positive. Yeah, you've got to get it right, haven't you? <laughs> um, I'd like Carl to read this out. Okay. Yeah, do you, do you mind? Read it out, just read it out loud. Which, Which one? one? Yeah, the, the gods are here, right, right, okay. Just read that, that's such a, a good bit the of gods yeah. of wealth into your home. Yeah. The Chinese have several gods of wealth. Yeah. Which they display in their homes to attract, what? Prosperity. Prosperity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My personal favourite is Chi Yi. Yeah. Who sits on a tiger. He sits on a tiger? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wait. Right. It's pretty difficult to find this, this fella. Yeah. If you could use Kang Kung. Or the three star gods. Oh, no. Wait. Read them out! Read out the names of the star gods. F U K. <laughs> read well, it out! Just read that! It's, it's a, a Chinese god! god. You're allowed Chinese to say god. Chinese god for no, the radio. No. You are allowed to say Chinese- you're allowed to say it, you say it then. Well, it, you look, it's- look, you're so immature! Read the three of them out, really. Okay, um, if he is difficult to find, you should use Quan Kung or the three star gods, Fuck Luck and Sal. All of whom bring wealth and prosperity. And what were the names of the gods again? Because I just, I'm, if I'm well, making it, a note at home, Rick, well, it's, it's just, it's the Chinese god. Yeah, it's this Quan Kun, or you can use Luk Sao. Or... <coughs> you can't. What? But it's a god, F U K. It's how, it's how it's yeah, pronounced. I assume. I don't know if we're, if we're pronouncing it wrong. I really apologise. Apologies, apologies so if, if we're offending anyone who's uh, of an Oriental persuasion. But that's Quan Kun, or Luk Sao, or Fuck. And any of those gods are available at a Chinese <laughs> supermarket. Near you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's Feng Shui. <laughs> It's an ancient art. You can't give me that look. I mean, w when you've been saying I've, I've got a round head, I was a bit like, yeah, everyone has. Stop having a go. Yeah. And I saw this picture last week. I thought, God, he's right. Can I, we get? Can we? Can, can't we just pop it on the XOM website? I'd rather not. I'll go on. Get you, have you seen that that man in a jar without a brain? <coughs> Sorry, you have, to, you have to, is that something, is that a product you can buy? <laughs> is, I mean, like, Sainsbury's? Uh, is it a dream you had yesterday Man and you wondered jar. if you could, can I, uh, yes, hello, um, could you make my dream into <laughs> reality, <laughs> please? <laughs> oh, we can't actually, sir. <laughs> In, uh, plastic would be good. <laughs> Sorry, what, what do you mean? In the man, future, you'd be able to download your dreams and then just, like, act them out again, probably, in the year 2000 or something. Mm. Yeah. Soothsayer. No, there's some museum somewhere. Yeah. That's got this little fella who was born without a brain and he's in a jar and it's just that he's got a really round head. Right. And when I saw this picture I thought, God, it, it just reminded me of this little fella yeah. in a jar. Oh, and what <laughs> do you mean he's born without a brain? He was born without a brain. So it's a baby? Uh, it's not a little fella. <laughs> yeah, but it's weird. Do you know the difference? Do you, do you have conversations with, like, people in prams thinking, that fella's little and he doesn't talk much? Yeah. You know babies aren't, like, little people? Well, maybe... Well, they are little people, but I mean, they're not, they're not very small adults. They're not like midgets. They don't do a job of work, is what we're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're very... No. What do you mean? I didn't read about it, I just saw the picture. And this is where you're going man. wrong, Carl. This is the, always your mistake. You see the picture, you don't read the little caption. But what do you mean? How do you You think guess at what you think the meaning is. But how did you know he didn't have a brain? He said something like the brainless man. <laughs> Yeah, but people say that about you. It doesn't mean you, literally, you haven't no, got no. a spinal cord. I, I, I bet somebody's seen it and, and knows what I mean. It's a famous picture. Right, right, call in 08700 800 1234. Once again, uh, you win a prize if you can tell us what Carl is talking about. <laughs> Just in general. It's an ongoing competition. <laughs> We're trying to find some CDs to anyone who knows what Carl is talking about. <laughs> Stereophonics, Vegas, two times. Well, we've had calls confirming that there was indeed, um, a fetus or, or a stillborn child. A pickled born, baby. A pickled baby. No wonder it died. Uh, born without a brain. Um, but everyone has, um, you know, pointed out that it wasn't a little fella. <laughs> it certainly wasn't a little fella. <laughs> no, no. Because it had been in the jar for a long time, I think it had aged a bit. <laughs> 
<laughs> what are you basing that on? You do carry on growing, yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. Well, your ears and your nose. Your ears and your nose. And your eyes don't grow, so, uh, yeah. you could probably, uh, yeah. I'll dig it out for you. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if, if, like, there was an experiment where they were raising a child just based on the information that we said on the radio. <laughs> What yeah. kind of a person it was like would they download, be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what it kind just, of information would they and have? And it took everything literally. Exactly. Who needs enemies? Good question, lads. Nobody. <laughs> this is XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Oh, they you. should print a little book of those. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. <laughs> oh, how you can relate any song or artist <laughs> to anything else. Easy. Joyful. Easy. Well, yeah, so, uh, m me and, uh, me and Carl went out, uh, for a beer and it was, uh, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, enjoy yourself. We started yeah, off, good. and you met my mate Robin, didn't you? Yeah. And uh, um, some of the stories. Do you want to tell Steve some things about Robin that Robin. you learned? Do you know him well? Yes. Well, um, do you know about his his worm problem as a kid? Go on. Right. He. uh, What I can remember is he he had worms as a kid. Not sure how he get them. He never answered me. He was getting a bit touchy about it. Right. But I, I, this is like the second time I met him. I think he was a bit annoyed that Ricky told me about his problem. What, yes. now, what, uh, now, straight away, you not being there, instinctively, what do you think went on with this story about worms? My suspicion yeah. is rather like when you told a group of people that Robin had once suckled milk from a cow's udder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Did you mention that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Th uh, my suspicion is that, uh, like the cow story, the worm story is not true. But and why, Robin... why would he get so sort of uppity about it? Well, because imagine it's if, not true. Imagine if he, that wasn't the first time he'd done it. Imagine if he did that every single time. <laughs> He was with somebody for the first time and Robin was, uh, just met them. He tells that- he will tell that story to anyone. But they do say there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> Poor Robin! I also told him- That's a fable. I also- I, <laughs> I also told him that the way Robin cured these worms- yep. Was because the doctor told his mother, right, to hold a piece of ham or cheese near Robin's anus so the worms would come out for the food and he believed it. I I'll said tell you to, why though. I said to Robin used to sit on spam to try and get the worms out, and he believed it. Well, Steve, right, do you remember that story about th ooh, three or four years ago, where there was some bloke in the army, he went away to somewhere, Vietnam or whatever, he was messing about in the woods, um... <laughs> messing about in the woods? Shouldn't he have been fighting? <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Right, and he, w he walked through some lake, and I think he'd cut his toe or something <laughs> on, on something, and some worm of some sort crawled in the- in the gash. Yeah. And, um, it- it was in his body and the doctor said, we've got to get this out of your body. So, what they did was, they said, right, the- the thinnest part or something of your body that things can crawl through is on the top of your head. So, they wrapped Where some Where the skull is. So, they wrapped some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't! They did. Ah! That's all that right. Thing. So, Everyone... he's gone in by the toe. Uh, so what we do is, I'll tell you what, that worm's probably heading straight for the head. We put a bit of bacon on it. The thinnest part of the body is the, the, the skull. Of course it's not the thinnest part of the body. It's uh, where your brain case is, isn't it? It's the hard- the skull. There was- there was a reason for it. And it was like they- they, um, stuck some bacon on his head. And <laughs> As ever, the vital piece of information, uh, <laughs> i.e. the reason, Carl seems to have forgotten. It, because the worm was in- in his body and they said every- you know, everyone likes the smell of bacon. <laughs> Including even worms. A worm, even, a, even a Vietnamese lake worm. They, <laughs> they, 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 oh, they love bacon. Last week, remember last week when I said about the little fella with the bone with no brain and you were proved wrong? No. Please. No, 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 no. We were saying it wasn't a little fella. We were saying it was a stillborn child. It wasn't no, a little you're fella. You're changing it now. You weren't having any of it last right, week. Right, hang on a minute. Let's just, I'm getting confused. There was a Vietnamese... There wasn't a there was a Vietnamese snake that went inside of no, soldier. Right. A little like maggot or some sort <laughs> that you have to get out of your body because it causes problems. Yes, <laughs> and so in order to get it out of the body, <laughs> they strapped bacon to his head. <laughs> yeah. That is great. This doctor. And did that work? I think so. They had a picture of him smiling. <laughs> oh, God, what the worm or the bloke? The bloke. Oh, dear. Honest, honestly, I, I hope someone knows a story and um, right. I just. It was about three years ago, I reckon. Okay. And, um, yeah, it did work. G.I. So, G. I. Bacon. So this is why <laughs> I- I- when- And so when what the wor- the worm burrowed out of his head to get the bacon? Get to the bacon. Right. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So I this is that. this is why when Robin was telling his story, I, I was a little bit disappointed if it wasn't true. Right. Because in a way, you know, Robin's never been to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I, I would do, really think that Robin, well, as Robin said at the time, Carl, why would I sit on ham then tell Ricky Gervais? <laughs> it's a very good point. Because if he was a kid, you d you do daft things like that as a kid. <laughs> Right. See, it's the telling Ricky Gervais, though. Yeah. No. no. I mean, you, you know, you might call up. Yeah. Uh, but no, I keep myself to myself. Yeah. Then you don't get bogged down in the office politics and stuff. Yeah. Sure. Is there yeah. a lot of office politics here? I don't know. I don't get involved in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Proved your point. So, so, so when, um, we're away and we're, like, out of action, who, who, other than Suzanne, who will you talk to of the day? How will you get a sort of, uh, 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 feedback from the world? How will you get sort of like input and- I always, if I've ever, uh, if I've ever I've got like a, a question on anything, the internet's sat there and I can just go on, online and find out- The internet I'm is, there. is good. It's brilliant. But it, it's not all verified. What do you mean? Uh, it's not all verified. It's not all factually, necessarily factually accurate. Anyone can put things onto the internet. It's the, you know, that's, it's, it's freaks and things that put on well, here's things one, right? like- Well, here's, here's one that I read in the week, right? One. <laughs> About this woman. Yeah. Uh, she was a bit of a punk. And, um, to get her hair done like she wanted it- Super glue? Right, no. She mm. got lard, apparently it's a popular thing, you might, you might know. Um, put lard on your head. Yeah. And you put it in the oven. <laughs> now, apparently the heat that you get from the oven is different from the sort of heat you get from an air dryer. Right? And she had to do that to get the style that she wanted. But anyway, uh, she comes into some money or whatever, treats herself to a microwave. Right? It doesn't, it's not true. Carl. Opens the door, jams the things, you know, like the little catch, so, so the microwave works. She jams it with a screwdriver or a knife or something. Yeah. Puts the microwave on, sticks her head in, boils her brain. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Right? Well, why is that ridiculous? <laughs> boils. Her brain. She boiled her brain. <laughs> <laughs> she boiled her brain. And this is what's good about the internet. I went straight from that and there was a subject about brains. And do you know that Russell Gr Crowe, when he dies, is, is given his, his brain to charity or something? Some sort of, <laughs> some people who can do stuff right. with it. She gave hers to Pot Noodle. <laughs> ah, Vesta. Yeah. Oh, That's boiling the, the skull. Yeah. That's, that's not true. No. It's not true, Carl. It's the same as the woman who put her poodle in the microwave, isn't it, and all it's that? just urban myths. They're but, urban myths. But again, where does it start? Someone made it up. <laughs> yeah. For a laugh. They're, they're just too convenient, urban myths. Everyone to- uh, you can tell an urban myth not to go, cause it's always, this happened to a mate of mine, and, and, th and th when you say what happened then, they go, don't know, that was it. Was it? Was that it? Was it? Someone boiled a brain and that was it. There was no <laughs> more story. Well, it, 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 there's, there's, were there any dates, locations, you, ever, times? I, I think it was in Belgium. There's that, there's that, there's that one. <laughs> 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 there's that one that a bloke, right, was gonna get a phone call at four o'clock to find out if his business was, you know, okay, right? And if, if he didn't get the phone call, he knew he was um, broke, destitute. So, uh, 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 dead on four o'clock, the phone didn't ring, so he went up to the, the, the roof, his office, and he jumped off to commit suicide. And as he was passing his window, the phone was ringing. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, it didn't happen. Didn't happen. Think it through. Think it through. Who, who, who told that story? Who told that story as he hit the pavement at 120 miles an hour? He's the only person who could have known those, that series of incidents. Also, why didn't he wait, as his life's at stake, why didn't he wait till five past? I said, I'm gonna give it five minutes just in just case. in case the lines I, are busy. Yeah. And this, and what sort of, what sort of bloke goes out, uh, I'll call you at four, okay, if you're busy, well, call me anyway. No, no, if I don't call exactly four, then, uh, no, you yeah. could commit suicide. Commit suicide. <laughs> I would, because if I don't call at four, ah, oh, that's the end of it. Well, call me anyway. No, that's not the way I work. <laughs> Why can't you just call me and tell me the other way? Well, I'm telling you how I do it. <laughs> if you're bust, I don't call. Can't you just call to verify in case something goes wrong? What if it's engaged? It won't be engaged. <laughs> just commit suicide at four, please. <laughs> it, it didn't happen, Carl. Uh, the, the other one, right? A bloke, right? Uh, he's, he's on a, uh, train station and, uh, uh, I'll tell you how I heard it. Um, uh, he's, uh, uh, he's waiting for a uh, crew station, waiting for, and um, he shits himself. 
uh, as you do. <laughs> and so he goes, oh, my train's in five minutes, I need- <laughs> So he runs across to Millet's and goes, quick, Levi's, thirty-six. The bloke just puts it in a bag, he runs onto the train, uh, he goes into the- the toilet, takes his, uh, um, trousers and pants off. His soiled trousers yes. and pants. Yes. Throws them out of the window, I won't be needing those again. Cleans himself off, open the bags, it's a jacket! Oh. No, he didn't he have didn't the call! Didn't call! At what point did he go into it and go, go, quick, Levi's 36, and the bloke went, sorry, Levi's 36, what, a pair? Oh, no, 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 shall I wrap them? Them? It. It. Shall I wrap? <laughs> Just wrap whatever it is. Do you want to look? No! Do, I'm not looking when you're putting it in the bag, please. Right? <laughs> Uh, well, 36 mm. wise stories, well, well, not, don't say anything. <laughs> I've told you 36 Levi's, <laughs> and <laughs> yes, put it in a bag yeah. and charge me for it. Yeah. I don't oh. want to discuss it further. Yeah. There was one, um... Here we go. There was one about a woman whose yeah. husband died, and she had him cremated. Yeah. And made, uh, made like a little egg timer out of him. Oh. And she said, I did that, so it can still help around the kitchen. <laughs> Well, that might be true. That might be a joke. That's quite sweet. That no, might be that true. That's true story, again. It was all No, not again, because the ones I just told weren't. Nor is the boiling the brains in a bag, curry, microwave. Head story, true. Yeah. They're too- they're too convenient. Will they... you be buried or cremated? What? Will you be buried or cremated? I don't know. Uh, by- uh, cremated. I what do you see? I've- I don't know, it's out of my hands. Yeah, I haven't thought about I've it. I've not thought it through, and no, I don't care either way. Have you heard the one so about- we've, li Sorry. I'm just worried that we're getting into a macabre world now of ashes, boiled heads, so I think we should play some music, let people just calm down. Levi's. Just think about some of the, the urban myths they've maybe heard, assess yeah. them, maybe they are absolute bollocks. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, they can move on from it. Well, yeah. it's just that- the death thing, right? Yeah. There was an argument on there about, huh? do you know that Twilight Zone or whatever it was, Tales of the Unexpected, oh, yeah. where the woman got buried alive? Mm. Yeah. They were saying how, like, years ago, um, they bury people thinking they're dead. Yeah. And they've, they've recently, like, dug coffins up, and then the people who were in the coffin weren't dead, they might have just been, like, in some sort of deep sleep or Catonic. whatever. And they've, they've lifted the lid off. Yeah. And there's scratch marks yeah. on the thing. Yeah. And that's pretty scary. That Makes you think. I mean, I hope they check these days. <laughs> that's all. Um, I'd like to play a beautiful song now by Cat Stevens. You're on the flight. How, how did you enjoy Edinburgh, by the way? Anyway, because I saw you up there briefly with you and um, Nick Frost, your new mates, Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. You know, uh, he prefers them to us now. I know. Apparently, I could tell that from just talking to him. It, really. it was just it was the way he was sort of looking at them. Over there, like, he was just smiling at Nick Frost. He's this his new best chum. You love right. Nick Frost. Don't Would you? you have preferred it, right? <laughs> if I went to Edinburgh and, and had to sit with some people that I really didn't like. Would no. you have, would you have been happier for me? No, I do you know but right, I, 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 so I had a great time with yeah. Simon and Nick and the and the nice people. But, but he kept Nick. going he kept going he kept going to uh, oi oi Nick tell Ricky that story. And he th and Nick and Simon wow well, all it was right and they're ghost stories. That's he loves them because they believe in ghosts. Oh. It's not, not just they're that. great oh, with great sense of humor just because they believe in ghosts. You go and tell him that he goes how do you explain that I was going when well, I wasn't there. What was that one you told me and it was completely wrong? About the it was uh Oh yeah, right. It's years ago. Oh yeah. Uh, some, some in olden days. Oh sure. When ghosts like, roamed the earth. What's the holotype? You mean? Yeah. Some doctor or something who was into like the way bodies work. Um, they got their head cut off. Uh, who and did? The doctor. Yeah, he was doing a bit of an experiment. And he cut his own head off. He, yeah. Okay. And it was about. Um, he said, "When my head's in the basket, I'm going to blink my eyes." Right. Okay. Sorry. Hang on. Let, let him finish. <laughs> And, um... So the doctor has chopped right, his own head off and, and he's told everyone, I'm gonna blink my eyes to no, prove right, that He's in the basket the and he goes like, right, I'm gonna blink my eyes about, f you know, as many times as I can. So quick, count them. And, and they count and he got to like 15 before he, he, he right. died. Right, now this is how Carl told me that. Till, till Nick Frost explained that, <laughs> Carl told me, like, he said, right, well a bloke, right, he had his head cut off and as, and it, when his head was in the basket, he went, count how many times I can blink. <laughs> and I went, well that's rubbish, he went, no, and Nick went, well no, he, he actually said when my head's in the basket, he went, and Carl went, oh, I said, so Carl, do you know the subtle difference? Do you see the subtle difference? I have to say though, guys, I still don't really understand what went on there. I really, uh, you've well, both well, lost me. Uh, the story is that a bloke who'd been found doing, um, uh, doing You a, mean uh, that Carl just explained it and that was a clear version? Because, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I still don't know what you're talking about, Carl. Well, this bloke had his head cut off at uh, experiments against God. He was a doctor in the, you know, uh, in olden times. Yeah. And when they cut his head off, um, Why did they cut his head off? Um, uh, cause it was, uh, he it was, was crimes against, exactly, he was executed, yeah. And, uh, uh, he said to his assistant, when my head's in the basket, I'm gonna blink, count how many times I blink and write it down as an experiment, right? Carl told it to me, like, his head was cut off and he went in the basket, and when his head was in the basket, he looked up and said, <laughs> count how many times I blink. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love the difference in that story. Yeah. yeah. Both rubbish, yeah. but, um, you know, one's, one's Why possible you, you and one isn't. Anything, you believe anything that you're told except when we tell you the truth. Right, yeah. here's one. Christ. Ghosts and that we got, we got talking about. Sure. Yeah. And Nick, uh, Nick said, right, he said, you'll like this one. He said, uh, my, uh, my auntie, um, was having loads of problems Why are you whispering? It's not illegal like, to talk oh, about ghosts on the radio. No, but, but it's eerie, and, this. Um, so, um, <laughs> the auntie's in the house and that, and, um, furniture's moving about all the time. Oh, God. And they were like, no, oh, this is Steve, you told me this one. This is such rubbish, mate. No, come on, let's listen. I'm gonna leave it to you. I'm gonna sit back and l enjoy it. I'm just gonna watch your face, Steve. Right. Sorry, so, so I missed said, the beginning uh, there, Carl. There's an auntie right, in the Basically, house. Nick's auntie. Right. Um, in the house, things moving around all the time. Oh, it was really? just annoying every time she tidied up. It was like, oh, <laughs> it was just annoying. Making a mess. <laughs> it was one part annoying to two parts scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> oh, so stuff dear. was stuff was moving around all the time, and yeah. they said, right, rather than right, we need a housekeeper. Yeah. Rather than having the house a mess, uh, <laughs> until we sort Stop this out. Stop it! <laughs> I've got the vicar coming round. Stop moving I stuff love around. This. Oh yeah, go on. They said that shouldn't be in the pants drawer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put all the furniture in one room, right? right. So uh, just have one room that's a mess, and have all the others <laughs> empty. <laughs> Because I love the poltergeist can't really, o it can move f wardrobes around but it can't open the door to put it in another room. Yeah. Poltergeist going, oh, I'm just making this room messy. I wish someone opened the door so I could f go on. Yeah, but, so, so all this stuff's in this room. So right? they moved all their furniture everything into one room. Everything, they put like the drawers in there and everything and <laughs> it was really uncomfortable because they were all like on top well, of each they other. They sat in the room with all the stuff. Yeah, they had to because that's where the three piece suite was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh God! Right. Oh God! So they sat there, like, all crumpled up on that, but nothing can move because it's so tight. Things, yeah. I think, things were trying to move. Yeah, but yeah everything yeah. was so tight. It's they just boxed like... that reporter, guys. So, um, so anyway, one night they sat there, like, sort of a bit awkward watching the telly and that, and um, they hear some banging. Yeah. In the next room. <laughs> so uh, she goes, "Oh God, what's that?" Oh, he hadn't moved in, had he, the ghost? So, uh... Um, some of the empty rooms. So does this bang- <laughs> moved some friends and family in. There's this banging about going on, no, so... Listen, listen, she, listen, she listen. gets up, right? Yeah. And what it is, they had the baby in the next room, because there wasn't much room for the cot. Right, so they left the baby with, with the ghost. <laughs> so, they go into the room where the baby is, <gasps> and the banging... Yeah. ...is like, do you know those plastic balls you get that you can chuck round the room and, like, they go mental? Right. The ones that you chuck once and yeah, they keep bouncing yeah, yeah, for ages. Yeah, yeah. That was bouncing around the room. Why? What, the baby all, had thrown it? It in all the walls. And the baby was there, stood in the cot, sort of laughing. Right. And looking at the ball and wherever it looked, the ball went. Yeah. And then she said, uh, she said, stop doing that. Yeah. And the ball just stopped. Did it? And it, and it rolled a bit and stopped. Right. So the baby had thrown the ball and it was watching it as it bounced around the room. It wasn't throwing it, it was in control of it. No, the point is, Steve, the baby had been doing it. It would have been the baby all along. The baby had been messing with the furniture. It was so a baby a that super had the power. Baby. <laughs> yeah, it's a baby that had the power. Special, ba it's special baby. It's a baby that powers. had the power. It's what, what a baby power? that had the power. What, the, power the power of telekinesis. Right. They were then trying to convince me that uh, telekinesis was not like all the other stuff that I didn't believe in, but that was a science. Right. Telekinesis was possible. Yes. Yeah. It's not. It's not like. It's not like ghosts and demons and uh, all that sort of. Telekinesis is different. Yeah. That, that's yeah. A science. Um, but. Ne but Nick's auntie saw it and... I love the fact that you're telling me that someone else's auntie <laughs> saw it. <laughs> so I should be, I should be satisfied with that. Yeah. I, I, I should be satisfied with that. I mean... No. So does she still live in one room with all her possessions? No, I think... The uh, baby the grew out of it, apparently. It, it grew <laughs> The up. baby grew out of it. it. So it doesn't use its telekinesis powers no. anymore? Well, no, it's no. like in Carrie, innit? She, she was upset for a bit and then she got over it. Okay, I'm mm. just gonna say one thing, Carl. Um, that was a film. Do you wanna play a record or...? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Get free. Alright, on XFM 104. Point nine. Can, I, can I just tell you a story that Carl told me a couple of weeks ago? Is this another um, ghost story? Another yeah, it is, story? yeah. Um, 
Uh, I called him out, I was, what are you doing? He said, oh, I said, I've just been reading ghost stories again. He went, th he said, right, he said, you don't believe in them, but how do you explain this? So I went, go on. He said, uh, well, I'll tell you as he told me it. He went, um, bloke, right, just sitting at home, just sitting at home, doing, you know, watching telly with his, with his cat. And, uh, the phone rings and it's a bloke going, uh, oh, uh, is that fire, uh, in your oven okay now? Um, cause your wife called. And he went, Carl went, well, one, there was no fire in the oven. Two, he wasn't married. <laughs> I went, right. Go on, he went, well. Then, right, there was a knock at the door and there was two sort of people in sort of well, white coats and they, and they kind of said, oh, we've come about that fire. Your wife called us. He went, one, there isn't a fire in my oven and two, I'm not even married. Right? And he said, and they saw the cat and they sort of, they looked at the cat, it looks a bit weird at the cat, the cat kind of, uh, uh, and, uh, he said, and then he went back it sat down, phone rings, and they said, oh, uh, did they sort out the fire in the oven that your wife told us about? Oh. He went, one, there is no fire in my oven, two, I haven't got a wife. And Carl went, what do you think of that? I went, that's not it. <laughs> he went, yeah, I went. <laughs> that's the end of the I story. Went, what? 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 He went, well, how'd you explain that? I went, explain what? I thought he was gonna say, <laughs> a year later we got married but she died in an oven fire. <laughs> Right? I thought it was going to be that. Anyway, That's what, people winding him up. Yeah. Or, 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 um, someone did report a fire oven and their name was Johnson and they looked up Johnson they got the wrong thing, it was the gas board or, <laughs> and they sent around to the wrong person, right? You know, he, he went, he went, yeah. I said, I, I explained to him, he went, yeah. Why do they look at the cat funny? <laughs> 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 oh, man alive, Carl. <laughs> this is really weird, right? I was, um, <clears throat> I was, uh, in my house once, right, and the doorbell rang. Yeah. Right, I opened the door and there was no one there. Yeah. Right? And then I looked across the street, there was right, some kids and there were some kids running away. Yeah. Now, how do you explain that? Yeah. There was another time, right, where, like, I, I opened the door and there was a bird goes, you've ordered pizza. I went, I haven't ordered pizza. And I heard my mate upstairs giggling and putting the phone down. Yeah. How do you explain that? Carl, seriously, what did you, why did you tell me that story? What did you think, what do you think it was weird about that? The fact that it was three different people. Is this all the information? Is that the entire story? Have you, did it was you three different people? Did you fall asleep and not read the end? A fire that didn't happen, about a wife that didn't exist, <laughs> and a cat that didn't look happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have a heart attack, Carl. What? I mean, why? Why did they look at the cat funny? Because what? cats don't don't like um, spirits, do they? <laughs> what? And the other blokes were ghosts. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's it. So these are, these are kind of beetle about type ghosts. <laughs> these are ghosts to walk the to walk the earth as the ah! undead, just winding oh, people up slightly. That's lovely. That is but lovely. And a cat that did not look happy. But seriously, why would ghosts uh, wander around just like winding people up? <laughs> oh, maybe something did happen there years ago. Mm. Some fire. Some woman might have died in the house of a fire or something. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it sort of all happened again. Bit yeah. Of a, yeah, it's certainly a mystery. It's, I mean, certainly it's a mystery. Yeah. I mean, I can't. I What's this I, book you were reading? You were reading a book, which is interesting enough. It was, um, it was the Fortean, Fortean Times. Oh, Carl. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, I, don't know, life. I don't know what to say. Well, I'll tell you this, Carl, there is a track that will, uh, that will spook you right out. <laughs> this is Warren Zevon from, uh, what was it, like, about 1979, early oh, 80s? Oh, great track. Werewolves of London. Play this, Carl. <laughs> but don't be scared. From 1978, Carl, Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon. Are you a fan of that? It's all right, that's a great track, isn't it? Fans right. of Warren Zevon, maybe if you should know he's got a new album out. Oh. As we speak. Although, if you're a fan, you probably know that already. Yeah. If you aren't a People fan, who hate him would yeah. be interested well, in knowing yeah. that he's got a new album out. Yeah. Do you believe in, uh, I think Werewolves. Lycanthropy? Is it, is it not called? What's that, sorry? Lycanthropy. What's Lycanthropy? Isn't that wa werewolfism? Really? Isn't it? Isn't it? Do you believe in that, Carl? They've, they've, they've found stuff, haven't they? They've found kids walking about who are all airy. Because, uh, <laughs> they, they sort of grew up with, uh, wolves and that. Yeah. So no, <laughs> you see, two things there. Um, right, uh, you cannot take on acquired uh, characteristics genetically. So, if you grew up with wolves, it wouldn't suddenly make you hairy. Uh, there's two- There's been pictures, there's been pictures, there's been stories on it, and I reckon most people have, or a lot of people have seen the stories. It's a popular you thing. Mean, you mean the kids that are born hairy? No, no, there's kids who have been born hairy, right? Yeah, that's it. No, but listen, and they walk around on all fours, <laughs> and they drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, 
I think this is no, too No, remember, easy. listen, remember that time with the maggot and the head? Yeah. Um, getting out with bacon and you were like laughing and then people called up and said, yeah, I've, I've seen that, I've read about that. Yeah, this but is the same you, thing have as you his... seen an XFM listener up close? Have you ever looked, They studied... drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've got to be kept on leads, people who listen to this show. There's, there's no point in me telling you about stuff. There is, it's comedy you see, gold. When you, when you were out of school, did you keep arguing with the teacher saying you're talking rubbish there? Teachers didn't teach us about werewolf boys and ghosts. <laughs> they taught us maths. God, right, tell a story about the man I'll cover. Right, in the same magazine as, uh, as the one with the, with the cat and the fire and that. Don't tell me that story again, it gives me the shit. Yeah, a cat that's <laughs> got a weird expression on his face yeah. is well, against it, God. Anyway, this isn't a scary story, this was just, uh, like physics. Explain. Physics. Yeah, yeah. Oh, It right. was going on about the, uh, nuclear bomb and uh, how powerful it is. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> they put, they put a manhole cover on top of one. <laughs> Blew it up. Yeah. <laughs> Never saw the manhole cover again. <laughs> <laughs> Man alive, Carl. <laughs> Unexplained. What's that. going on there? Something weird is happening there. <laughs> oh. If anyone has ever seen that manhole cover, <laughs> yeah, uh, please yeah. get in touch. We'd love to know where it is. Oh, that's fantastic. What sort of experiment is that? I imagine all these scientists on multi-billion pound research budgets, they're going, we test everything. What would you do to man or cover? Don't know. That's like letting a couple of students <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, exactly, have control yeah. of a nuclear Do you reckon they can send a traffic cone, cone yeah. into orbit? Go on then, put it on there. <laughs> I love that. I imagine that. What? Uh, what, of what value is that? <laughs> I'm like, what we could do. We could let the, put the manhole cover on it and aim it and then blow the bomb up and it would, <laughs> it would, the manhole cover would have someone's eye out. <laughs> fire it. See if you can fire manhole covers <laughs> off the nuclear bomb. Whatever. <laughs> Toy bangers to a bomb. See if it's louder. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, listen, Carl, play another track and then afterwards, can we probe your views on the, the week's news? If you want. We'll do a bit of a white van Carl session. <laughs> Carl, um, I've I met Carl a couple of times in, in our, our, our sabbatical, and, uh, he, uh, said to me once, he said, um, oysters. I said, have you ever tried oysters? I, said, I, I, I don't like them. And I went, uh, he said, oh, it's just, just a thing about swallowing them whole, you know. He went, well, the reason you have to do that is just they're, they're fatally poisonous. <laughs> and if you bite into them, they kill you. And I went, well, of course they don't. He went, yeah. I went, well, of, co of course. <laughs> they wouldn't. What have you chewed on? I said. He said no. I said, well, so you swallow them whole and they're not poisonous. He went, yeah, ah, see. He said, so he said when you swallow heroin in a in a Johnny, he says that doesn't kill you, does it? <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Oh. And then uh, about a week later, he went, I was wrong about them. <laughs> you were. Yeah. I went. Well, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did you say? It's if you eat them and then you have some whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> They, they turn deadly when, when whiskey comes into contact with them. Yeah, when, when, uh, when they've had a drink. <laughs> when they've had a drink, they get a bit rowdy in your stomach. They right. start fighting, they can yeah, cause get larry. So, 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 so what are you saying now? Are you saying you don't believe that? Am I saying what? Are you saying you don't believe that? Look, he that? thinks he's got us here. He thinks he's got us here. Yeah, I don't believe that if you eat an oyster, then drink some whiskey, you die. You might not die straight away, but... You won't Eventually, feel. 50 years time. If you've got, you've got to keep on drinking whiskey. Uh, yeah, 50, a bottle a day. 50 or 60 years later, he was dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oyster and a bottle of whiskey a day. <laughs> oh. Then, out of nowhere, 40 years well, later. Where's this information come from, Carl? If, if some doctor called up now. Yeah. And put you right, would you believe him? If it wasn't Dr. Fox. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about the airy, airy lads growing up with the werewolves and that? They didn't grow up they with didn't werewolves. werewolves. Grow up with werewolves. You've confused they're about three different genetic stories. Just a genetic mutation where they, you know, they were born with a uh, very, very hirsute. There were a couple of kids. Yes, they didn't we know. grow up with wolves. And you can't kill them with a silver bullet. I mean, you're confusing two things. There were you? some kids who were very, very hairy. Yes, yeah. they're in folklore. There were some kids who grew up with wolves. Yes, I don't think the two are connected. Yeah. Yeah. There's no such thing as werewolves, Carl. You, you Believe me, I saw a documentary on it on the History Channel. You'd have loved it. You, you, you grew the up with a magpie. Werewolves. You know, you don't flap around, do you, and steal people's jewellery? Uh, what was the thing you told me about snails? Uh, have you ever had any, um, any post that, that looks like it's been opened? Occasionally, yeah, yeah. Alright, well what it is, it's not your postman having a... A sneaky look. A sneaky look. 
problem is, right, uh, slugs. <laughs> the problem is slugs? Slugs <laughs> at night, they like nipping about and that, and it gets a bit cold. And in London, like in the country, they go into the grass, don't they? Right. But in London, it's like, oh, what can we do? <laughs> and, um, they go in letterboxes. Right. Slugs go in letterboxes. Get in letter letterboxes, it's nice and warm in there, uh, dry and what have you. And, um... <laughs> These are homeless slugs, aren't they? The ones that lost their shell. When they're in there, they only found out that they love glue. <laughs> they and love glue? They've been eating, uh, eating the glue off the stamps. Right. And, um... <laughs> People have been getting charged for posts because it hasn't had stamps on it. It's like, well, they put a stamp on it. Yeah. It's like slugs have been eating it. <laughs> sure. And they also eat the glue that's on the actual envelope shutter. And it's a real popular problem, this, that, uh, <coughs> letters are being lost and opened and all that stuff. Yeah. Slugs. Are, like, are slugs, like, stealing postal orders and things and cashing them in and stuff? Yeah, again, you know, if there's a doctor, if there's a postman. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, well, with us two expert witnesses, a doctor <laughs> and a postman. So, uh, <laughs> so posties is a real problem. Um, so uh, it's, when we see, when we see uh, a slug's trail, or a snail's trail- It's glue. That's the glue they've stolen, is it? That's, they've just, that's a little- I'm we, not, I'm not gonna say yes to that, that cause I'm not follow, sure. But we could follow that trail and, and find the, them, and they'd have a big sort of- <laughs> Big uh, uh, Yeah, our stamps and- Yeah, <laughs> there they are. Like, birthday cards for our Yeah, but a two pound notes. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. Slugs. Wow. So, oysters and whiskey kill ya, and slugs Be very careful. If you're gonna go out this evening, you're thinking of having a whiskey, maybe some oysters, be very, very careful. Yeah, and if you, are gonna, if you are gonna post a letter, please, please do please, not use please. tasty glue. <laughs> I met Carl in the week again. I, I told you you shouldn't do I this. Know. You know, you should but then when the he weekend. starts, he starts saying things like, "Oh, is this loud with the people?" I go, "No, save it, save it." And we just sit there. and I'm scared to talk in case he comes. Up. But um, you did tell me a couple of little things, didn't you? True stories that are, you know that, that I mean I enjoy. Right. Can you tell um, Steve one about the doctor? Right. Oh God. Um, What's what, where, is this something that happened to a friend of yours or is this? Uh, no, no, I read about it. You read about it. Okay. Um, there's this little lad. <laughs> right. Okay. First of all, it's it's years ago, right? When right, they didn't have times. they didn't have decent doctors in like every town and that. Yeah. And uh, this little kid is dead ill, right? Yeah. And the local doctor. <laughs> Well, there's a phone call involved, so I don't yeah, really well, give the impression it. that it's like medieval, medieval times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but I didn't say that, I just said it's years ago. Go on so on. this kid's ill, right? Yeah. And he's, uh, he's lying in the bed, and uh, he's, mm. he's all like, all going funny colour and that. Yeah. And, uh, and his mum says, I'm gonna get the local doctor around. The local doctor comes round, and uh, he says, oh, so I don't know, don't know what's up with him. He said, um, to leave it with me. Leave it with me. He well, said, the doctor uh, said that. I'll have a, yeah. He said I'll um, I'll I'll phone up uh, a top doctor. Okay. Who was in America or somewhere like that. Yeah. And uh, so he goes to the phone in his office and he calls America and because it's years ago the phone line isn't that good it's all crackly and that. Right. Yeah. So he's talking to the doctor and he's saying I've got this kid. He's a funny colour and. Uh, you know, he's it, really weak and that. I don't yeah. know what's he's up not with giving him much to go on, <laughs> right? Sure. So, uh, so the American doctor, right? Yeah. He goes, yeah. What you want to do? And it's all breaking up, right? Yeah. He goes, what you got to do? You got to. Uh, it's all breaking up. You got to give him some uh, parrot's blood, right? Some parrot's blood. Well, that's what he thought he said, but the line was really bad. Yeah. He meant parents' blood, but he, he heard that he said parrots' blood. He oh said, right, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, leave I, it with I me. I can see where this is going. He goes, goes to, uh, you know, a pet shop. Yeah. <laughs> he says, give us like half a dozen parrots. Sure. Text them round to the kid's house, takes the blood from the parrots, puts it into the kid, kid's fine. <laughs> the kid's fine? <laughs> I've never- It worked. <laughs> such a load of shite <laughs> in my life. <laughs> I've never heard <laughs> such twaddle, such- <laughs> Just made up, enhanced, exaggerated. <laughs> oh, what in my a load life. of old rubbish. Cop. I mean, when he told me this, he said the doctor said, "What do I do?" And the doctor on the other end said, "Give him some blood." And the doctor went, "Where do I get blood from?" <laughs> <laughs> so hang on, wait. I you, just need to. I give just him, need where to do I get blood from? From his, give him some parents' blood. <laughs> give him some parents' blood. <laughs> give him some parents' some some parents' blood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, 
But hang on, I just need to know where you <laughs> Sorry, read this. Carl. Where was this? Where did I you stitched read you this? up. You know when he said, he said, so do you believe it? I went, tell it to Steve. He went, do you believe it? I went, tell it to Steve. <laughs> Carl. But where did you read it? it? That, that was on the internet. <laughs> what? Where About is illnesses. it on the internet? Where, I'm what, always what looking pages? at stuff. I was looking at stuff this morning because of, um, because <laughs> of Yora Geller last night. <laughs> Eating, uh, eating all that funny food and that, and also, uh, they all got a bit scared last night, didn't they, with a, with a snake. Mm. I didn't see that. Is this, um, I'm a celebrity getting me out of yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, he got all worried about a snake getting on the, uh, sort of wandering about in between the sleeping bags and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, they were all scared, and it is so Leave easy. Leave it with me! Sorry, the doctor says, leave it with me. <laughs> leave um, it with me. <laughs> yeah! Ah, uh, leave it with me! <laughs> well, they were all scared, because there's a snake, and it's so easy to find stuff out. Before they- before they- where are they? Where is this jungle? <laughs> Australia, right. I think. Right, before they went, give it half an hour on the internet, <laughs> I found out with snakes, you don't need to worry, okay. right? Um, they're deaf, they haven't got any ears. Right. So as long as you- you're really quiet, Creep it'll, around, it'll yeah. probably leave you alone. Yep. And also, they don't have eyelids. Uh huh. Um, so they were suggesting if one's coming towards you, just, like, kick sand in its eyes. Because <laughs> yeah. it can't blink and it leaves it a bit, like, annoyed yeah. and it wanders off. But they didn't <laughs> do any research before they went. Yeah. And that's- uh, you're, you're, I think your knowledge would hold you in good stead. I don't think you need to know any more than you know. Um, well, we're gonna come back to that because he also explained to me where, um, uh, a saying comes from that I want to, you to be part of. But, um, Oh, and also, you should <laughs> mention as well, Carl, you've come up with a, a competition, is this right? Brilliant competition. You, have you, have he you thinks this, this up? He thinks oh. this can go to television. Is this a good idea you've come up with? Yeah. Carl, I'm so looking forward to so, it. So, uh, I mean, I'm- I'm looking forward to it. Um, continuing, uh, our exposure of myths. And, and Legends of Rockfall Tale, we exposed that myth that some maybe older rockers have, have had it and they've got no- they, they were never any good and the yeah. kids today- Oh, I don't want to hear that. People like Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart's a great artist. This, uh, He's a slightly laughable man, but a great artist. Let's go back to when it was- when it was rocking. When he cut the mustard? Yeah. yeah. Rod Stewart, you wear it well. Great tune. On XFM 104.9. Yeah. This doctor, I mean, we <laughs> should find out who he is, really, and if he's still practicing, because it- it worries me a little bit that he, you know, mm. he did that. Also, I mean, he thinks he's got away with it, but how could he be sure those parrots wouldn't talk? True. True. Do you yeah. know what I mean? There yeah, were six yeah. of them, they probably got together and they pro they probably put it on the internet. I mean, it, I- I feel that that story, Carl, <laughs> it- it asks more questions than it answers. <laughs> yeah! Really. Like most of your stories. Yeah. That's the to problem, I always feel them- I always feel like I need a little bit more information. Like, yeah. did the parrot boy continue to live? <laughs> yeah. You know, to a ripe old age, or did he yeah. die weeks later <laughs> after this charlatan doctor who was yeah. going around, you know, spurious and- Did he break his nose trying to crack a big nut? Mm. No, I think- I think he's, uh, he was alright, he- he lived to a- See, a I'd have shout- if I was that doctor, I'd have shouted- Back down the phone. Are you sure you said parrot's blood? Yeah. You parrot's sure it was parrot's blood? Listen, I, I mean, I, you know, I'm not the best doctor in the world, but d d did you say parrot's blood? <laughs> yeah, but what you're forgetting is you're going back to the time where, like, they used leeches to do, like, No, 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 we're going back to the late 70s if there's a phone <laughs> call to America direct. <laughs> Come on, Carl, they weren't calling America, like, in the medieval times or, or in the Victorian age. Come on, think about it, Carl. Yeah. You know, it's, this has got to be like the, the like, you know, 30s or 40s, <laughs> the earliest. <laughs> you know? <All> right. <laughs> I'm intrigued to know where this is. I think there's someone on the, on the web who's just putting information on there to lead you astray. Yeah. I don't, cause you're the only person who finds this stuff. Other people are using this to write what thesis. What were you looking at that then? What were you, what were you I'm looking at? I always look at weird stuff. What were yeah. you looking for? But what do you type in the search engine to find parrot blood stories? What were you looking for? There was this woman with a weird head. <laughs> Why were you looking for that? What were you Just doing? Just because I'd heard about it. I'd heard, like, someone talking about it on another station. Right. right. About this woman with a- with a funny head. Right. <laughs> I love the fact- I love the fact you're intrigued with these things. You go in the basement of Waterstones or Dylan's or somewhere and there's these- there's these medical books that you're loving, mate. Yeah, but this is free on the internet, isn't it? <laughs> it's all there. Yeah. So what do you typed in? Weird head woman or- <laughs> <laughs> Lady with head. <laughs> yeah. Weird, weird, weird people or something I put in. Sure. Yeah. Did, you, did you come up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seven thousand uh, hits, Carl <laughs> talking to. Well, it's all there, isn't it? It's interesting. The one that I was telling you before about um, the what's the name? The the lost letter. The lost letter. What's the lost this? Uh, lost postcard that's uh, just turned up. 
Some yeah. woman, uh, sent a postcard years and years ago to, to a niece or something, right? Yeah. And, and her niece was like three years old sure. back then. And just now, like, I think like yesterday or the day before, it turned up, the postcard turned up 74 years late. <laughs> 74 years late? It took 74 years. And that years. three year old girl's been living in the same house that whole time? <laughs> Well, that, yeah. Sure. There's no way about that. You see what that. I mean? There's always a question you can ask <laughs> to just scratch the credibility of these stories. Yeah. There's always- it's like the apocryphal tale. Was this the is slugs? It, was this those slugs from last week? Yeah, well, they're, they're holding back because they're slow because the postman slug is useless. His round takes him 74 years. Then he's got to go back to the beginning he's got 74 years and they can't carry the bag. But that's why they go- that's why they turn to glue. That's why they turn to glue. Oh. It's pitiful. It is pitiful. So, so you don't believe that someone sent a postcard years ago <laughs> and somehow it's been stuck in the bottom of a post bag or something and it's only just- Stuck in the bottom of a post bag? Yeah. That means that there's like an, a 95 year old postman who's still yeah. wandering around. Did, 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 you, did you have to pay like the, the difference and the charges? Uh, Cause presumably the, it, it was- It a, wouldn't have had Queen Elizabeth's uh, It was, it was a penny wrong, black, it? presumably, was it? Yeah. <laughs> what would be on the stamp? It would have been invalid, surely. <laughs> I don't know. That's See, these are the what? questions no, you should no, ask no, no, yourself. Because no, no. if it's the postman's fault, the post no, office can't turn out. He was out. on the street dead. at the time himself, wasn't he? He was dead. No, he is dead. Yeah, he'll yeah. be well and truly dead now. Yeah. But the fact is that the post office made an error, <laughs> right? They lost this letter. Sure. Mm. It's only just turned up. They can't turn around and say, sorry about this. I hope it isn't urgent. Um, <laughs> it, it's turned up 74 years late, and by the way, you owe us 25 pence. Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't do that, would no, they? No, that's so, true, that's true. So that's true. You you're asking questions though, you see? That's, that's true, you see? So, t um, you, you're interested in like where sayings come from as well, aren't you? Cause yeah. you, you told me one of the week, what that, I don't know if Steve's aware of that. Do you want to tell Steve this one? What's this a saying? Can we do this quiz? D do, do this we'll first. do the quiz later. I know you're excited about the quiz. Let's do that later, but what's this saying? Right. Uh, what is the saying? Chucking a baby out with the bathwater? Yeah. Do you have, you heard that? That, have you heard that phrase? Uh, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Well, yeah. 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 Right, wh wh how would you use that? Well, um, how would I use that? Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I suppose if you've, maybe you've been discussing something, you've come up with some plans, but you're slightly worried and, um, you know, you might abandon the whole plan, whereas there might be some ideas in there which are still worth retaining. Exactly. So you don't want to ba throw the baby out with, with the, the bathwater. Bath water. There might right. be something you can just change yeah. and you don't want to, yeah. yeah. A similar, you know, there might be a few ideas you can salvage from an, an otherwise worthless one. Well, the saying, right, comes from, like, years ago again. Mm -hmm. And um pre or post phone. <laughs> and uh <laughs> ages and ages ago when like you know, the bloke worked in the house, you know, he was like the coal man. And then you have like <laughs> No way, it's important. Then then like the mum is like uh, you know, she stays at home making the dinner, looking after the kids. Yep. yep. And uh and you've got like the little kid who's just growing up, just messing about and stuff. So what happens is back then they didn't have like fresh flowing warm water every day. Mm. So all they could do, they could only afford to have like um, one one full big bath of fresh water. So they'd fill up the bath, right? And then the dad would come home and he'd say, oh, I've had a right, you know, had a tough day at work and that down the pit. And uh, his wife would say, it's alright, I'm putting the dinner on, you're gonna mm. have a nice warm bath. So, because yeah. he, he gets the bath first. Because he, he gets the bath first because he's the grafter. And right? he's covered in coal. He's covered yeah. in coal, so the water's like minging by the time he's finished. Yeah. Right? And then the wife says, oh, after all my uh, cleaning the house and doing the cooking, I'm a bit sweaty now. She's covered in dust and yeah. grime, she I'll, has the next I'll, one. I'll have a bath, yeah. right? Yeah. At the end of the line, there's a little baby. Yeah, yeah. He's been playing out all day, also got like little, uh, little grubby knees and stuff, needs <coughs> to have a bath. Yeah. It goes in the bath. Right? But because the water's so dirty. Sure. They go and empty the water out of the window. Can't see the baby in it. <laughs> Chucking the baby out with the bath water. That's how it, that's where it comes from. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say, Steve. Because <laughs> I've heard this. I just, I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> what do you think, Steve? Steve. So. <laughs> so, firstly, that, that, that sort of, I mean. Oh. That doesn't explain why- Where do you why, start? Well, You're that's... struggling, aren't you? You're struggling where to start. Well, first, I can't see how we've now applied this to, I've you know, been the thinking example of this, I've, I've been thinking of this for days, Steve, waiting for you to I hear mean, this one. These coal mining parents yeah. deeply negligent. Yeah. I, I love They've the left their baby because, in the bath, because unattended. It, that's the way around to do it. The one covered in coal- Yeah. Has you go bath. first. Sure. You go first. Don't wash the baby and then get in that. Yeah. You, you, one covered in coal goes first, yeah. that's the best idea. Yeah. Second most dirty one goes second, yeah. and then the clean little baby, yeah. I think, I think we should do him last, cause yeah. he's, he's done nothing well, towards no, this family. But, but more than that, Rick, leave him to his own devices. Yeah. Jack, I'm just gonna throw the water out. Yeah. 
in the bath. Don't check have you, first. Have you checked that the baby's not in there? No, I'm not Don't even going to waste my time You'd checking. You'd see it. You'd see it. I'd be able to see You'd a baby. You'd see a baby if in a there. If a baby was in here, yeah. I'd be able to see it. I'm yeah. just going to throw it out. Yeah, I'm not even going to look, to be honest, Jack. Not We've all even had our bath. Yeah. If the baby's in there, yeah. then it should be, be making careful, itself Jack. Sick. We have lost three children this way. <laughs> Don't worry. Where did you read that? The acid. Right, tell the other story that you totally, you totally believe this as a true story, don't you? The fella with the, the, um, being killed. Right, do you know how the other week we were talking about some fella who had <laughs> his head cut off and he said, uh, when my head goes into, into the basket, I'm gonna blink a lot, see how many times I can blink. But if you remember, when Carl first told me that, it was, uh, um, I think it was Simon or, um, uh, Nick that had to point it out, he goes, no, that's not quite right, Carl. Carl told me it, that he had his head cut off and when his head was in the basket, it looked up and said, count how many times I blinked. <laughs> yeah, sure. But he believed that as well. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, he was yeah, happy, yeah. he was happy with that. Sure. Do you know Sorry, what I mean? Sorry, so, so, yeah, you got that, a couple of weeks ago there was a guy, he had his head cut off and before he had it cut off he'd said, I'm gonna blink to show yeah. that there's life after death and, and, and he, he, did, done he did 32 blinks, yeah, right? Sure. So, you two were sort of putting that down the other yeah, week. we were skeptical So, that. I looked again on the at, internet? at some other website mm. yeah. and <laughs> there's a guy- Sorry, it's the website, just to clarify, the website is the place where you bought that property on the moon, didn't you? Because it was a bargain. <laughs> right. So, um, <laughs> this guy- Been gazumped. Look, we'll see who's been gazumped when- the, when this world ends, yeah. I've got somewhere to go, yeah. right? And I know you'll be calling me up, saying, oh, can I come with you? Have you got, got no, like two squares? Square foot, foot, <laughs> no, I've got eight. You're gonna have to stand <laughs> deadly still <laughs> on the moon in your two square foot. I've got about There's 20 no acres. There's no place for Suzanne. It'll just yeah. be you. Twelve it's off, it, love. It's um, all. It's all those people with big heads and web feet. They've been buying it all these years. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, right. right. Go on. Anyway, play a record. Tell us a story after it. We've been oh, chatting for sorry, sorry Carl. Here. No, it, it, there's no record. Play a tune. We'll come back with this. What's this? Another ghost story? No, oh, no, let's play my, one of my favourite songs of all time, because I'm going on holiday and getting into a lovely, serene move. Serene Sorrento is probably from that. Uh, it's Neil Young, After the Gold Rush. Beautiful. Still to come, that competition as well. I look forward to that. Carl's Quiz. Yeah. What an amazing track Beautiful that is. Tune, yeah. Neil Young, Dynamite. After the Gold Rush. So go on, Carl. Sorry. Go on, Carl. So just take us back a few steps, Carl. What, what's, what's the story? Right, so I did some research. Right. <laughs> Let's just recap again. The guy, there was a guy you read about who had his head chopped off, he was guillotined. Yeah. He had said to the people around him, Count I am blinks. going to blink once I've had my head cut off to so show the brain that can still, or the brain yeah. can continue to work after, yeah. after yeah. death. Okay, so yeah, we queried that. So you, you weren't having any of it? Well no, possibly for a few seconds till the, the oxygen stops being fed to the cells because the blood has drained away. But you know, no, nothing spectacular. So right, go on. Well, along the similar sort of lines, right? This is quite a few years ago. Um, this fella sort of upset the royal family doing something, right? Uh -huh. So they said that this isn't good. It wasn't Ben Outen at that jubilee thing, was I it? Can't, was I can't remember what it was. And they said, right, <laughs> that we're, was terrible. We're yeah. gonna uh, we're gonna cut your head off. Um, you know, oh. you gotta you gotta show people that you can't be doing what you've been doing. What was this? <laughs> the nineteen seventies? <laughs> when you say a couple of years ago, you mean maybe sort of? Was it the olden days when the phones weren't days. very good? Ages ago. Yeah. yeah. Ages ago, sure. So, um, so, so yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. So. <laughs> very philosophical. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Yeah. Well, you were near school, you read off. Yeah, this was enough. literally ages ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, go Simon Sharma's History of Britain. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, and even before that, which is young, <laughs> yeah. before, when it was all mental and different. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Carl, go on. So he's having his head cough and he's, but no, he's resigned to it. It's, it's the day before, he's kind of got it into his head now that I'm not gonna have my head, uh, much longer. Sure. So he said, let's, let's make use of this. Yeah. <laughs> He said, uh, <laughs> I wonder how long, like, the body can stay alive yeah. without the head on it, <laughs> right? So they were like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> Hoover. So. The jailers? Whoever he was the asking. These jailers with one eye. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get that thug. So, so he said, no, look, wait a minute, I've got an interesting scientific experiment, jailer. Well, yeah. fair enough. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he said, what I want to do, right? He said, um, you know, surely it's, it's my last right. You know, I'm gonna mm. be, I'm gonna be dead tomorrow. Sure. So, um, let's he do a test. He didn't draw it out this long, did he? Yeah, he said, let, let's, let's, let's test this out. You know, okay. he said, do us a favour. He said, you know, it's my last day. Um, what I want you to do is, you're gonna cut me head off. Let's put a white line on the floor. Right. And see if, you know, cause there's no point asking how far he can sort of walk without an head if there isn't a line because you, you don't know what to count, do you know what I mean? If it's just, if he loses his head and he's running around all over the place, you can't yeah, really count that's that. That's not impressive enough, yeah. So, so they said, let's make a white line. Sure. Yeah. Who said this? He did or they did? I think they started to join in with him and say, well, let's make yeah. this a, you Sure. Know. You get <laughs> it, go on. So, uh, <laughs> They got Norris McWhirter, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the Guinness people. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So they said, let's get this white line. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Dedication's all he needs. We'll, we'll do this, we'll do this tomorrow. And he said, all right, then, yeah. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah. See you in the morning! I'll see you in the morning! <laughs> night, night, sleep tight. <laughs> Bye bye. Uh, I love the fact that Carl knows exactly what was said. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. He doesn't know the story yeah. or what order it is yeah. in or when but it he was. He knows exactly what was said. What, but he knows the intricacies. <laughs> All right then. See you in the morning. <laughs> mm, bye. Oh, kissy, kissy, kissy. Oh, I'm not. I'm not like that. Oh, you joker. Oh, don't let the bed bugs bite. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, he gets up. Do you want a paper yeah. tomorrow? No, I'm all right. Go on. He gets up mm. and they say, right, you know, today's the day and that. And he said, well, you know, I've got, <laughs> got used to the idea. So yeah. here's, here's a white line for you. Got <laughs> used to the idea. <laughs> go on. So, uh, so they go, right, you ready then? And he said, I go on. And they cut his head off and the body walked 32 steps without <laughs> a head. Wow. 32 steps. Incredible. And that's, that's, that's the lesson, really. Did it get as far as the white, it walked along the white line, did it? Yeah, it stayed along the white line, did 32 steps, and then started to stumble a bit, and it just fell over. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, it was be. a test that your body can still keep alive for a little bit. Yeah. When, when you've lost your head. Absolute twaddle. <laughs> Absolute twaddle. <laughs> what, what do you reckon you can do, then, without an head? Uh, how, how many steps? Nothing. There'd be muscular spasm, right? Yeah. It, it would twitch uh, a bit. It would, yeah. You could not distinctly take 32 steps, mm -hmm. the body c well don't- Yeah. Yeah. Ah, is yeah. the doctor still on the line? Yeah. The fellow that bought six parrots? Yeah. And, uh, you know, you could have got 32 steps. Right, so a you don't believe man, that- I'm doing a bit of line dancing. Right, you don't believe that, but something that you do believe that a cockroach can live a week without an head. It can. Hmm. Slightly different. Slightly different kettle of fish there. Why? Well, mm, insect to- uh, human <laughs> is is the, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, that well, difference. There's not that much difference in well, some insects. Do you know that a snake has a heart and lungs and kidneys and stuff? Go on. No, well, I'm just saying. So you're making out as if like they're a totally different like species. <laughs> I am. I am making that up. I mean, call Rick, me old fashioned. Do you know what you're talking about? Though? I don't want you embarrassing yourself, Rick. <laughs> yeah, I am suggesting they're totally different beings. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Um, now. Carl, uh, the, the the cockroach is is very. You've got another hour, but have you got well, anything we, at we, all? We, I've got that feature educating Ricky, which is a bit of a play on words as well. Right? Do you know that? Do you know the film, Steve? Educating Rita. Yeah. I see well, what we've done. I see what we've done. <laughs> Go on. I'm doing that, and I teach Ricky stuff. Uh, <laughs> okay. what, what, what what do you teach me, Carl? Well, I've got a few different topics. Um, Go on. Do you know, like how you taught me about Hitler and Che Guevara and Winston Churchill? Mm -hmm. I'm going to come in with topics every week, and this week I've got. Uh, Ghosts. Ghosts. No, hanging bacon is one of the topics. Say that again? Hanging bacon. Hanging bacon? All, all the titles- Francis Bacon? <laughs> no, all the titles are sort of named to sort of make- sort of tease you and get you more interested in it. Hanging bacon? Well, you've yeah. certainly intrigued- Go on, what's another title one? Uh, hairy Chinese kid. <laughs> I'd no. go for that one. If, I, there I mean, was a, if there was a university degree yeah, with that yeah. title. Yeah, no, I'm gonna go for Harry Chinese Kids. And I the think. final one, yeah. a Alien Gives Man a Beard. <laughs> <laughs> I, right, Alien Gives first. Man a Beard. I am gonna first. Right, listen, Carl, you've gotta tell me. Right, to first, right, let's do it in reverse. No, we're, order. Not, we're not gonna do it now anyway. What do you mean? You, we've got to do it now. But, the, I mean, that's, this is the first interesting thing you've said in an hour. Okay, the listeners have just uh, been subjected to rubbish and ah uh, oh, and mistakes and everything for the <laughs> last six months. Please, we've got to do. Alien gives man a beard. What is that? Tell us that. Right. Um, Sorry, this is just you telling me something, is it? <laughs> well, this feature is you telling me something. I'm teaching you something. Educating Ricky. Huh? So, are we playing it now? We're already into this feature. <laughs> well, into this feature, are we? Yeah, I suppose we are. Yeah. <laughs> Should there not be a jingle or something? Yeah, can we have a well, jingle? there's no point, cos look, I come up with ideas and you dismiss them straight away, so I'm not wasting my time making stuff. Right. If you don't like it. Well, okay, it. let's play, let's play Educating Ricky. Right. Brilliant. Go, right. right so... ding a ling a ling a ling a ling Educating Ricky. Right, what are we going for then? Hanging the bacon, airy Chinese kid, Alien Gives Man a Beard. I think Alien Gives Man a Beard. I'd like to do that. Right, there's this fellow, I think it happened in America. Uh and he saw a bright light in the sky. <laughs> and, uh... God, if you're bored! And he stood there. <laughs> this is a true story, is it? Yeah. He stood there. <laughs> yeah, it's cause it isn't, Steve! <laughs> and he saw this bright light and it came closer and closer and it was a UFO. 
right? <laughs> yep. And he looked at it and it disappeared, <laughs> right? And he gets back in his car. <laughs> he looks in the mirror. And he looks in the mirror. Yep. He's only got a beard. He has <laughs> You sure it wasn't it. someone else who got in the car? And he was still standing out there? No, right. But. And it turned out. Yeah. He got home and said to his wife or, or his girlfriend, uh, it's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got out of the car to look at a bright light. And I, gr I, I got back in the car, I grew a beard, and she said, never mind your beard, where have you been for three days? <laughs> and what had happened is- He the, passed out because he was pissed. No. <laughs> the, the UFO had taken uh, him for three days, yeah. but he'd only thought that he'd, he'd only looked at it and it went away. Yeah. But what had yeah, happened is, yeah, he yeah. took him and yeah. he grew a beard because he hasn't had a shave. Um, so, right, okay. D d I mean, was- Will Smith or Tommy Lee Jones, anything to do with this at all? Did, uh, were you, did you see this on a video, maybe, and thought it was an educational film? No, it's from a book that some kind person sent in to me. Here. Yeah. Um, Can I just ask again, just, just again, I'm just throwing this right back at you. Um, do you think there's any other possible answer here? Right? A man is absent <laughs> for three days from home. He's grown a beard. The length of time that it could take to grow a beard, lest we forget. Um, what if he hadn't actually <coughs> seen a bright light in the sky? What, what if, if he, he was lying? Drunk? What if he was lying? He'd got knocked unconscious, mm. he'd had a car crash. Just any lying. No, things. just lying. Or he it's, was just lying. Yeah, he'd, he'd been on a bender, getting pissed for three yeah, days and with his And that was his excuse to his wife. And they went, what are you gonna- what- Dennis, what are you gonna tell your wife? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. not gonna believe I was out with you, lads. Uh, yeah. uh, Just say you're only away for a minute. No, she and no, I wasn't away for a minute because of the beard. <laughs> oh yeah, it, lo it looks like you've been out for three days. Well, we have, that's- <laughs> exactly. Right, okay, we've got to cover that then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, alien abduction. Great one. Okay, let's try that. Do you see? That's a little scenario there that could have been played. So out. when you say educating Ricky, what have I learned from this? Never listen to you again. That's all I've learned so far. Never listen well, to yeah, you. Yeah, we'll add a little bit more in here, right? To well, no. Uh, what do you mean, add a little bit more? We'll add a bit more to this. To this, what I'm educating you about. Go on. Right. Um, there's only a law in America that says <laughs> if you touch a UFO, you're going to get done. Now, why would they make a rule? I don't know that. Do you know, like all our rules have a code. Uh, Carl, I, I, I genuinely do not know what you're talking about. Right? Do you know, like how here? Do, do you know? What I have no idea. Right. Okay. Do you know, like over <laughs> Rick, here? I'm listening to Capital <laughs> and these headphones. <headphones. laughs> I got I got Foxy on from yesterday. Uh, right, let's let's bend that. No way, it's <laughs> crazy. No, I, I want to hear about airy Chinese kid. <laughs> let's play a tune. And okay, let's play come a back tune. Come back with airy Chinese, Chinese kid. kid definitely. Some, some doors. Yeah, I yeah. just thought uh, I'd go oh. back. Uh, take it back to the sixties. Uh, this is a tune that a friend of mine sent if me. If you touch a UFO, you get done. Soul Kitchen from the Doors. Shambles today. Mm. This. David Bowie, Slow Burn. Yeah, quite a quite a Eno trilogy yeah, feel about it. Lodger yeah. and sort of low type. Yeah, but uh, yeah, mm, enjoyable. Um, now, okay. That's stressful, isn't it? We've, I think we've got things working now. We've had people coming in and out, just shaking their heads, going, "Shouldn't have bought that desk." <laughs> but it's all sorted now, I think. And uh, oh, I'm, you notice I'm, how it I'm took um, about what? twenty-five minutes for them to come down as well, though. Do you feel like we're maybe quite low in the pecking order in the building? Definitely. You know, it's like Capital First, Capital Gold. They can shoot off to other sort of pirate stations, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> people's yeah. car radios, then they come back here. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I had a job at Richard Sounds. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Light fitting was uh, zzz, buzzing. <laughs> yeah. um, now, but we've got. Um, thanks for staying, listening. Um, right, okay. Educating Ricky. What have we got? Every Chinese kid. Go on. Right. Yeah. This is the. Uh, I didn't want to do this. Really. You didn't want to do it. Well, I wanted to give you three, and I, I, and I gave you one. It was like the alien uh, man gets a beard or whatever. Yeah. And Which was total rubbish, so uh, this one should be better, maybe. Hairy Chinese kid. Right, well, yeah. we've talked about hairy people in the past. True <laughs> 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 cool enough. Aren't we? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the little kids who grew up in woods and hung around with wolves and that. Yeah, again, you're confusing it. Yeah, they're not, they're, they're not. There were some people that were born. A, a very hirsute. They were not the yeah. people who were brought up with wolves. Yeah. You just put that together in your <laughs> Homer Simpson type mind. Right. Well, this is like a sort of, sort of close to that sort of story. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the weird thing is, right? Chinese people aren't that hairy as a as a nation. <laughs> no, seriously. That's that's a well known fact. Oh you, they don't they don't have that much body hair and right. stuff. Okay. So this little kid who was born over there. Um, he was like covered in stuff. Was he? And 
it was only his nose that wasn't hairy. The rest of his body was caked in hair, right? Mm. Um, and his hair sort of What grew. sort of hair was it? Was thick, it- Thick, thick hair. <laughs> 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 no, what I mean is, was it sort of, uh, uh, like a pony's mane, so he just looked like an Ewok? You know what I mean? Just like hanging down sort of straight, dark well, hair? Looked, in the picture it looked like, uh, it grows from it his downy? eyebrow- it grows from his eyebrows quite thick. And then it just goes all the way over you his head. You don't think it was just really long eyebrows that he'd done a comb over? No, th it was all over his body. It had a picture of, like, his back and that. Yeah. And, uh... Um, had he styled it? Had he styled it at all? Did he, did he have it a quiff or...? No, it was just... It was just, just hanging all everywhere. over him. Yeah. And, um... And they were like, you know, this is a bit weird. Happening, uh, happening in China. Mm. Where, <laughs> where we're not normally that airy. <laughs> The scientists leaving <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> the press, the local press, and that were getting him down, calling him Monkey Boy and all this. Oh. And um, thinking Chinese press. But the doctor, <laughs> no, yeah, oh, they're cruel, aren't they? The doctor, like those game shows. <laughs> well, That's Japanese, isn't it? Yeah, That's cool, though, yeah. And the doctor said. um, I was Carl talking through all that time where we were just like talking to each other then? Because <laughs> I, I turned around and I still saw he was talking. <laughs> Go on. So anyway, the local press came in to see the hairy boy, the monkey yeah, boy. Yeah, and they were like being tight, taking the mickey out of him, and the doctor said, uh... Showing him nuts. Said he's only, he's only hairy. Said, um, he's a healthy young kid. The only faults he's got is he's got a little bit of eczema and a boil. <laughs> so, <laughs> and he said everybody should just treat him the same, and <laughs> I think he grew up a healthy, healthy kid. Um... Yeah, so that's, that's the, uh... That's, that's the end of the story. That's not a story. Why? Well, I, but I've got nothing, I don't know what to say to that. So someone was, someone in China was born slightly hairier than the rest, and he was normal apart from eczema and a boil. That to me isn't a story. <laughs> but that, I, that, I, if it is, I've got a million. I mean, it, it's sort of like, bloke from Manchester, went a bit bolder than the rest, got a job on radio. He was normal. I mean, that's not a story, is it? Some great adverts there on XFM. I enjoyed them. Point nine. <laughs> Absolutely. We, some, we have to give away these, uh, three pairs. We have to give these away, Rick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've got three pairs of VK Shadows. I know, but this, this, this is, is so jam-packed. I think we've planned too much for this <laughs> we show. We have, indeed. We next just... week, this is, I, I think we have a little bit flabbier next week. <laughs> Rick. Do less, do can less. We, Rick, can we chill out next week, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, um, then. So, yeah, we, uh, we, uh, any, any ideas, guys? Any questions? Sort of DJ Shadow-related questions? Any Shadow? DJ shadow. Or DJ? Questions, what Carl? Does, any ideas? What does there? the word DJ mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's too easy. It's it. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something I do know. Go on. Right? But I, I can't really get a question out of it. Go on, just tell us. There's a shadow somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's already good, isn't it? I'm loving no, it already. No, no, right? There's a shadow, I think it was in America. Yeah. And uh, it's on a quiet road. I, I'm guessing somewhere like Boston, that's what I, I well, imagine. <laughs> okay. Right? No, 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 no. Somewhere yeah. like Boston, and people at night used to see this shadow moving about, and they'd go, what's that? Right? And, and it got known that the town, the little local town, got known for this shadow, but it didn't cause any problems. People what are you to... talking about? Well, it was <laughs> like... Just, you lost me. What are you talking no, about? No, do you know, like, some places get famous, like, uh, Scotland's got the Loch Ness Monster and that, but no, it doesn't cause any... Yeah. But it doesn't cause any problems. It doesn't exist, go on. Right? So there's this shadow walking about on the road, and, What? Uh, what do you mean? What, no, what, see, again, <laughs> rubbish. Right, so it's Nonsense. walking about... Where did you read this? Where did you see this? It's walking about... This was on the internet, and I'm Oh, sure. sorry! <laughs> sorry! Right. I thought it was shite. <laughs> I didn't so, know it was on the internet. Right, so this shadow is moving about and God, uh... Independently of and, an object. Yeah, and the, and the local mayor and that is like, yeah, it's a bit weird, but it's not harming anyone. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor involved! <laughs> was he mayor. elected to that post? Hey, hey, mayor, we got a problem down here, seems like a shadow. <laughs> uh, well, it's not causing any problems. No, it's just <laughs> causing any problems. Yeah, go but on. That's, but that's the thing, it was left for years and then it did start causing problems. <laughs> <laughs> I see, that's it. If you leave these shadows to go unchecked, <laughs> Rick, they go crazy. Yeah. You let them run amok in the yeah. city. Yeah. You've got to stand what well did on, do? on what did do? What, did, what did the shadow do? It was pushing people off the bikes. <laughs> <laughs> it was what? It was pushing people off the bikes. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll find out more for that next week. <laughs> Right, that'll tease Oh, them. you're a maniac! We'll do more on that. <laughs> we haven't had time for educating- Please never have children. Right, listen. <laughs> you are Just a promise maniac. me now you'll never have kids. But we haven't got time Okay, now, listen, so alright, DJ Shadow, have we got time for these- to give these tickets away? Yeah, if they just call up, we'll- No, um, I'll tell you what, I've got a question, right? Go on. Where do you th where does Carl think this may have taken place? 
If you've been listening to the show, where do you think this evil shadow has been running amok? Let yeah, us know. Yeah. The number, Carl? Uh, ooh, Good question. Oh, eight, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. So, Excellent. uh, but that's it. We are that's actually it. out of time. We are indeed. Now. Have I got, have I got time for a song for ladies? It's a bit tight. I was Why? told to finish now. Too. I know, but we've got to get finished early today, so. Why? Just because we have and we're wasting more time talking about why we have to. Oh, this is pathetic. So, <laughs> they call up, uh, where did they see the ghost? Yeah. And you've got to pick the tickets up from reception you can go tonight see DJ Shadow. Shoddy, That's it. this right? is shoddy. Right, see you then. <laughs> lobe of this. Yeah, get yeah. a lobe of this, yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's a story about a girl who, uh, <laughs> she was deaf, right, for, for four years. And, um... It happened quite a bit back this. What year? Or was it about, what, what, I think specific it was in, ages ago, was about, it? About, yeah, quite a bit back. Yeah. Uh, she was deaf for about four years. Having an argument with her mum, it said, which I didn't quite understand. Because mm. I don't know how they do that. Yeah. But she was having an argument, well, and a man pushed her against the wall, yeah. and she banged her head, and her hearing came back. Okay. Uh, was she wearing a Walkman, and it fell out? And she'd realise, oh, that's There's what. no explanation. There's no explanation? Well, why is that teaching me something right, then? so I knew you'd say this, <laughs> right? So I thought, right, I'll stick something on it. Do you know that bees are deaf? <laughs> no! No, you can't just, no! <laughs> no! If no. you ask someone something they don't the answer, they don't tell you something else. Just, I'll tell you something else then. I can't answer that, I'll tell you something else. Imagine that, if you asked a teacher. How do birds fly? Wow, if you're gonna do that, tallest building <laughs> is, I mean, what? <laughs> well, that's that was the equivalent, Carl, of running away. <laughs> <when we asked laughs> yeah, the intellectual equivalent. Look, look over there, there's a monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, what do you mean? What she, okay, so, oh. So she, her hearing There's no came explanation. Back. There's no explanation. <laughs> or you don't know. Well, there isn't one, is there, really? It's a bit what, weird. But doctors, the only did thing- Did the doctors not look into it? No, I think they just said, oh, that's good. <laughs> But, so, <laughs> again, I don't- where did this information- is that- if you read this on is the that net, it? is that all they put there on the net? There was once a no. deaf woman who hit her head and she and could hear. hear. Came back. It was bizarre things about being deaf. Was there three, oh, like- yeah. was there I've three got that book, yeah, it's a good book, that. Was there three yeah. more pages you just couldn't be bothered to read off? Yeah. No, no, it was just a little bit and it Was said, there a little picture, a cartoon picture? No pictures, I just read going, it. Ow! Look, Ow, if you I don't want to know, if you don't want to learn, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, uh, uh, um, it's not his vault. Let me have it's not his vault. You've got to save this. This has got to teach me something. It'll be an interesting story. Right, it's not his vault. This fella. Yeah. Um, what year? Ages old, ago? Old times? In, I'd say in the 70s. Okay. Would you? <laughs> Any evidence for that? I'll, uh... Does he wear flares in the, uh, <laughs> in the story? Right. Is that your reason? No, it's, it's a bit like Yori Geller, this fella, right? Where oh. he's electric. He's electric. And, um... If he walks past the telly, the telly would fizz. Uh -huh. If he walked past the radio, it all goes like that. Ooh. His hair stuck up all the time. Ugh. And he'd be having a bath and everything would be alright and then the power would sort of switch on in his body and the electric in his body made him jump out of the bath. <laughs> so... <laughs> what do you mean, so? What is that so? What does that so mean? You've given us nothing. You've given us nothing. You'd have to at least give us the scientific explanation. Yeah. Electric eels have 400 volts in them. Oh, is this the running away again? <laughs> what was that one called? Yeah, but they-, they, they but it's, not, a, it's not his vault. But there's a reason <laughs> they-, they, 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 they <laughs> <laughs> not his vault. It's not his vault. I thought it was gonna be something about keeping I think it we should, safe. I think we should do these the other way around. <laughs> I think we should tell vault. us the story and then we'll hear the pun. <laughs> It's not his fault. It's not his fault. Right, let's leave it. Thank <laughs> you. <Forget it. laughs> Educating Ricky. Doing it. Uh, We're not doing no, it. No, we are. Oh. I'll tell you what, though. Talking Genius. about talking about ghosts and that. Do you know how I'm into them? Yeah. yeah. Right. How weird do you think this is? Right. Well, it's not true. Before you say it, <laughs> play record. No, go on, go on. Uh, <laughs> go on. Right. It's this woman. <clears throat> oh. I don't even know if it's ghost. Really, it's just a bit weird. Sure. Yeah. Me? Sure. There's this woman, yeah. and she's, well, she's not a woman, she's a kid. Sure. <laughs> okay. She's, sure. She's walking down, like, a, a street in her area, it's a nice day and everything, everything's normal. Um, she's walking down, and a woman comes up, cycling past, right? The woman on the bike looks at the kid, absolutely terrified, right? right. Got a really scary face on her. Yeah. The kid's thinking, why, why is she doing that? Yeah. Right? So anyway, she thinks nothing, nothing of it, goes, you know, I think she was playing in the park or whatever, goes and has a nice day, 
about fifteen years later. Oh, right, yeah. She's, I don't know, I think she was going to work, right, on a bike. She was riding her own bike. Riding okay. her own bike, cycling down the road. Oh, yeah. Looks at the kid. That's the thing that happened, like, fifteen, twenty years ago. Right. It's her on the bike looking at her as a kid. Right. Not, not, not another child. No. Nope. So right. it's her, she's seen well, herself. Uh, what, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know where to start. Firstly, where does this information come from? But I mean, what, why do you ever con- I mean, I don't know what part of that you think can be true. I, I don't- I, I, I mean, honest, I'm- oh, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's a bit weird though, isn't it? But it's not true. It didn't happen, nothing happened like that. She said it did. Well, Who? she's wrong. Who? She said she saw herself. She saw herself as a kid, didn't she? Did she come and, on uh, riding And as an adult when she was a kid. <laughs> did she stop and talk to herself or did she ride on by and think, that's a bit weird, there's me as an eight year old. <sighs> I won't stop, I'll be late for work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, if I'm late again the boss said he'd be in trouble. Yeah. Oh. Well, and where is this information? Was it, did it happen to someone you know? No. Nope. You overheard it on the bus? No, it was in, uh, it's in the fourteen times. Ah, oh, right. Well, uh, okay. that's the answer. Good. We've okay. got to the bottom of that. Right, good. Um, <laughs> brilliant. Now, what do you make of David Blunkett accusing- That's, yeah. that was the main bit of the story, wasn't it? Yeah. But this one, right, we have sort of talked about it, and, uh, you weren't having any of it at the time. What? This, this next bit of science I'm telling you about. Go, Go on, on then. Right? Um, remember when I told you about a lad he was living at home with his mum and dad, right, everything's, you know, normal life, go out of school, that sort of thing. Yeah. Then, I think his mum and dad had an argument and it kicked off a bit and he thought, I'm sick of this, it's happening all the time now, they kept having arguments, so the kid ran off into the woods. Mm hmm Oh. Yep. Right? God. Now he, he left, he went and ran in the woods and he ended up living with some monkeys. Right. <laughs> right? And he thought, this isn't a bad life, you know, there's no arguments going on. Sure. He was getting on with them, um, <laughs> and the weird he thing bananas. is, this, <laughs> this is where the science bit comes in. Oh, sure. He grew a load of air on his body. That's not true. It's not true. It is true. It's an acquired characteristic. It's, it, 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 it. <laughs> I bet someone will back me up on this. But th no, no, you can't, you you can't grow hair like that. You might get a little bit uh, more down here. They might uh, the erectile tissue might, uh, you know, they won't fall out as much. That would, you know, but. You don't actually grow a big mane if well, you're cold and you're a human. Well, he did. He did. This lad did. I know it sounds a bit strange and that, but he, he was living with the monkeys, um, <laughs> and because it was cold, his body reacted listen, to it. Listen, listen. He was no hairier than he would have been if he was walking around naked on a cold day with or without living with monkeys. The it, fact that he was living with monkeys makes no difference. No, I know, but I'm trying to get, you know, picture it in your head what it's like. Although Mickey Dolenz was always pretty hairy. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so, he was living with them and, um, he went into town or something one day. Oh, yeah. To get some food <laughs> and the people there were like, hang on a minute, that isn't a monkey. Mm. Um. Wait, he went in naked? <laughs> no, he was there covered in hair. Yeah. yeah, but naked, but covered in hair, so it was decent, it was, it was... Yeah, 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 but they, they, that was a weird thing, they thought it was a monkey in the shop. And then <laughs> so went, presumably he had a big long beard as well, cause he couldn't shave, could he? No, no, he just covered, he looked like a monkey. And they were happy to serve the monkey, <laughs> were they? There's a monkey, he's How buying did he a walk? newspaper and How some did he milk. Walk? How did he walk, Carl? Did he walk start upright or whistling along? The, just pi to the picture that I saw on the internet, he was on all fours, but I don't know was. if that's when he was running he was. away after he did, did sort of, you know, realised he was a kid. But this was a picture. So he was a kid as well, he wasn't even like an adult with the beard. No, he was a kid. Brilliant. Brilliant. And the, the beard kicked in a little bit. So early. listen, so the Go people on. caught him. You're an idiot. The people caught him, yeah. shaved him, right? Got it all off. Didn't grow back again. Right. It just it You're grew. an idiot. Well, like I say, people will have heard this story or read about it. You're an idiot. And they'll email in. They don't let me down. And they'll agree that you're an and idiot. The, no, no, they'll they'll have seen the story. You're an idiot. So that's a little bit of science. <laughs> you're an idiot. The weird thing is, right? Looking looking around in the week at weird stuff on the uh, on the internet. Yeah. There's this woman who's got a big head. Oh yeah. And. um, she was fed up with it because when she was walking down the street, it was so big, she couldn't hold it up. Right. Right? She couldn't hold it up. Oh God! Oh God! Okay, keep, shut up. So, she when, she, hold up. when she was walking, she, 
her eyes were hurting because she had to sort of look up all the time because her head was that heavy. Her chin was sort of balanced on her chest. Right. right? And she'd have to peek up, yeah. So, uh, she goes to the doctors and this was after years and years and, uh, <laughs> said, you know, I thought I could put up with it but I can't. It's, it's <laughs> How big eyes. was her head? It's big, I, it, I don't know if it was like big because there wasn't a picture. I don't know if it was just big or a lot of bone. <laughs> so it was heavy. Pretty heavy. Right, like the elephant man, just so, outcrops. Yeah, right. so, yeah. uh, so the doctor said, yeah, um, we can sort that out. Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll have to take your head off. Right. Okay, no, okay, listen, go. Listen keep going. Okay, listen, keep going. Because yeah. I, again, I, what you don't seem to understand is I, I have the same reaction to you when I see it. Yeah. What? Right? You're quizzical yourself. So I looked at it, they took her head off, um, chipped away a bit of the bone, mm -hmm. made her head lighter, put it back on. <laughs> <laughs> right, play the Smiths. They is took asked. a woman's head off. Yeah, yeah. this is asked by the Smiths. <laughs> yeah. And if you'd like to ask Carl something, details coming up soon. How does that mean? Good. Got, a, got a couple of things under the banner of uh, colon then educate me. Yeah. Uh, we've got, um, this is interesting, right? Do you mm. know if you have a, an operation on your brain, <laughs> right, what yeah. they do is the I mean, this is why I'd never go to the doctors. I don't like doctors because this sort of stuff freaks me out, right? They can operate on your brain and what they do is they put you to sleep first, cut your brain case open. <laughs> <laughs> your skull, yeah. yeah. Your brain case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then wake you up and operate on you. So you're sat there with your head open. Yeah. Messing with your brain and you well, don't no, feel anything. Well, there's no nerve endings, is there, in the brain? But still, it's not right, is it? <laughs> is it what you think they do it for fun? No, but they go, oh, go on, Reggie, wake him up so he's all freaked out. Well, is, is, is it necessary that you're awake? Do you think, or well, they need the brain active, don't they? Yeah, but it is when you're asleep. You're having mad dreams. I had a mad dream the other day. <laughs> go on. No, I might tell you about it later, but there's no sense to it. But so your brain's still your brain. Okay. Where is this conversation? Yeah, I mean it'll turn out. I go, no, Carl, I was there. That wasn't a dream. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. But, so, I mean, if I had an operation on your brain, heaven forbid, well, <laughs> operation anywhere, I'd like to sort of think. Well, I'll have an injection. I'll go asleep, but when I wake up, it'll all be sorted. Yeah. yeah. The fact that. Your brain the case is open. Open, and they wake you up and you think, oh, is it all done? They say, well, have a look in the mirror. And you, and yeah, your brain- See, I don't think they do that. I don't think they try and frighten you when you're doing an uh, operation. Yeah, I don't think that like, you go about your business and they sort of follow you around, dabbling. Yeah. No, but it's almost like they are having a bit of a laugh with you. Right, well, I'd just like to say now that they don't. Anyone who's going in for an operation on their head, uh, do not ever listen to anything but Carl wh says. Wh why have you got to be awake? Because you'll be bored anyway, you'll be sat there. They'll well, they, they give you a out. telephone directory look and they say, look how many Macs are in there. We've, that's the Scottish telephone directory. And, you know, time flies when you're counting <laughs> that sort of thing. No, but do you know, like, when you- What are you- what are you telling me? What are you asking me? I'm just saying how weird it is. It's weird, isn't it? It's like, do you know when you go for a haircut, <laughs> right? It's a bit embarrassing. Well, I don't anymore, but when you go for a haircut, it used to be a When bit you go for a haircut. It used to be a bit embarrassing when, like, they'd wet your hair and they'd make you have that sort of- Hitler cut because your hair's wet, and I used to hate it. And I think, do you have to do that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You know it's what I mean. Similar, it's very similar to uh, open um, skull no, surgery. What I'm saying yeah. is, it's almost like barbers like to do that to make you look daft and feel daft for a bit. And there's women coming in and out, and you're sat there with a daft haircut. Yeah. And this is what that reminds me of. Do you think that? Do you think they do it in a shop window? This brain operation? I'm just saying, it's a bit weird. Do you think, why are we doing it in John Lewis's? Just so more people. I love the idea that that's what doctors are doing. <laughs> Let's make this guy look a bit stupid. Yeah. Open his brain. Look case. at the twatty look for this brain <laughs> out of his head. Take a Polaroid, Reg. Take yeah, a take Polaroid. Polaroid. Look at him. Look, 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 <laughs> at, look, at, look at his face. Right, look, right. Clock his face when I give him the mirror. Get this on camera. Put Carl. this fake nose and glasses. Sorry, on. is that? Did you teach me something then? Was that I, education? I taught you that your brain, your brain case can be open when you're awake. And you just sat there, sort of letting them get on with it. Brilliant. I've learned that. I'll never forget that. Right. Go on. Anything else? You'll love. Let's play a song because the next one is amazing. <laughs> what, even more amazing than that? Yeah. <laughs> play a song? Yeah, bit of Bowie? No email still, by the way. No, I don't think it's working. It's not either. working today. Lady so Stardust. We'll have to do a phone in for Rockbusters. Off right. the Ziggy Stardust album. Alright. Uh, old woman, about 70 years old. Yeah. Uh, she's normally fit and healthy and stuff. Nothing wrong with her. She's having a good life. And uh, one day she goes for a check to the doctors, yeah. just to check herself out because she's yeah. getting on a bit. Yeah. Uh, she says, "Take your clothes off and that." 
So she does, and uh, checks her out. Says, "Yeah, you're looking good. You're looking good." Uh, turn round. Uh, he said, "Oh God." He says, "You got a, a tumor on your buttock." Right. So she goes, "Oh, what can you do anything to sort it out?" So they go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we'll get book you in for an operation. It's best if we remove this." Books are in for an operation. Operation day comes. Strip her down and that. They're all stood round. The doctors start to operate. It only turns out it's a pork chop that she sat on five years earlier and it had stuck to her buttock. Right, Carl. <laughs> I right, can forward I, I, you. I'm, I'm honest. Not, right, I'm, no, I'm, listen. I'm, 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 serious. Right, okay, Carl. I'm telling you now. I'm leaving. I'm no. never. I'm never doing this show again. No, I'm serious. Honestly, you're talking. I, I, I've never had such. But you are play record. Play record. <laughs> I can't believe it. it. What do you mean you can't believe it? Stop, stop the record. Stop the record. Stop the record. Right. Okay. Right. What do you mean you couldn't believe it? No. When I read it, I said I've got to uh, tell Richard. This that. woman had a pork chop stuck to her ass for five years. You mental case. <laughs> of course she didn't. I don't think I did answer it. I just said, you know, the odd, the odd thing. <laughs> you just said I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> little things, little things. Like I, I ran home the other night and said, oh, I've just learnt something today. She goes, go on. And um, do you know Lego bricks? Oh yeah. The name came about because some kid's mum, the kid was messing with the bricks, and she said, Lego are them, and come and have your dinner. Play record. It's got to be rubbish. It's got to Play be rubbish. It's always rubbish, isn't it? Man? Yeah. Well, well, they're they're Scandinavian for a start. Well, so sh the Scandinavian. Well, there's no yeah. Let go. Interesting. Thanks for that. Whereas Lego was yes. uh, event when a mother had sent someone to get some, though there's no name for them, she went, can you go and get some? There was a gap. He went, yeah. oh yeah, I'll go and get some, because they weren't called anything. Brought them back, started playing with the <laughs> and then she went, look, give me those. He went, no. She went, let go, you idiot. Yeah, the actual explanation, various people have emailed us in or phoned in now. The company was set up in 1934. It's a Danish company, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Lego comes from the Danish words leg got, which means play well, and it was later discovered that it was also a Latin phrase that meant I study or I put together. <laughs> yeah. Didn't they? I mean, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Why? What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you today? I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just, what, is, big, what, you're fed up with people, um, uh, uh, taking issue with some of the stupid things you say? Lego was invented by a mother going, let go of that. What are we gonna do with all the buildings? The earth might collapse. What do you expect people to say? Well, Even our listeners know you're talking rubbish, and some of those d d aren't allowed to wear socks. I mean... Listen, right, last week- got an idea, I can see it in your eyes, he's got a brilliant idea, wait for it, go on. No, no. It's something, when I was looking on the web, yeah. found something out. Go on. Um... It's a story about yeah. a woman who had a baby, <laughs> who had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> ah, what? A, a, a woman yeah. who had a baby who was having a baby. <laughs> <laughs> it was no, it was no clearer right. when you repeated it. No, Carl, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do for the common good, right? Pursue this line of inquiry, right? Because I don't know where it's going, or play a record. I I'm actually torn. I don't know what to do. No, I remember seeing it and thinking I've got to tell Ricky about that. It's brilliant. What? Uh, should we, what should we do? Should we should we go with it? Is it I mean, it's like it's entering into the abyss. It's opening Pandora's box. It's, <laughs> it's peeking. It's going down to the cellar. I've got a couple of questions though. Go on then. Well, come down there with me. <laughs> okay, come down right, in the cellar with me. Okay, right, Carl. What, 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 first of all, it was on the way, what, what, what do you mean? The, the baby was what? Had another, was it, she didn't give birth, they didn't, the doctor didn't find one of those set of Chinese dolls up her. Rus Russian dolls, whatever that's, they're called. That's what I pictured it like, those, those dolls where you take the head off and there's another one in there that all look the same, but no, the story was, <laughs> there's a woman who's- No, don't just say it again, that's a headline. That's not a story. There was a woman who had a baby, who had a baby. <laughs> yeah. That's not a story. That, um, imagine handing that in as a, th as a thesis to loads of the BMA. Hey, are that? There you go, uh, and yeah. read that. That's a, said, that's a children's rhyme. Yeah. There was a woman who had a baby who had a baby. What do you mean? So the baby, she had a baby, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, that bit's fine. We're yeah, okay with that. That's normal. That's normal. A, a totally woman had a child. Yeah, totally normal. She gave birth. Fine. Yeah. Next. Well, I, I, I don't know that much more, apart from the fact that huh? the baby's like roaming about. 
<laughs> and then, uh, twelve, like twelve months later, she's like, oh. Interesting. So the gestation period of the, that baby was actually three months more than an adult. Yeah. Excellent. It's weird though, isn't it? So was the headline, my baby's twelve months pregnant? <laughs> what are you talking about? Twelve months later it had a, what are you talking about? Forget it. it no, you haven't, you haven't even finished the story. That you said, and twelve months later, you didn't even finish the sentence. So what do you mean? No, I didn't. I didn't read any more into it because I just saw you that and I thought, that's, that's weird. And then I just was thinking, oh, like imagine the kid at school at parents' evening. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. And it's like, well, your kid's <laughs> pretty good. Now, now let's have a look at your work, sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think that'd be weird? <laughs> but what? Did the child have a baby? Yeah. Of course it didn't! Play record! We shouldn't have gone down in the cellar. <laughs> we should have I just can't. left the cellar door closed. But I never learned. Monkeys, Pleasant Valley Sunday, brilliant. XFM 104.9, Carl Pilkington. This show is monkey mission. heavy, it isn't is it? Indeed. It is monkey heavy. Carl, if you were president, would you sort of make compulsory to maybe have a little, little monkey? Everyone has a little monkey of their own? Little chimps out and out, old age pensioners. It's not a bad little, uh... It's funny, you know, cos there was, um, <laughs> a, s a story the other day, uh, when I was looking for monkey news. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah. There's a story about a couple who, who couldn't have any kids, right? There's something wrong with them, but they really wanted a kid. And they got some, uh, dodgy email address where they could buy a baby online, oh, right? Yeah. It was someone who would have a kid. And you could buy it for three grand or something, right? Yeah. So anyway, they got one, they got picked, and they're like, brilliant, there's the money. Got the baby and everything, they were loving it. Um, you know, playing with it and stuff. As it got older- Feeding it. <laughs> it got airier. <laughs> oh, shut the f- oh, car! Turned out it had been sold a chimp. <laughs> You, you maniac, you stupid mank twat. How Don't on earth? talk shit. That is as if. That, <laughs> uh, uh, what? I didn't know it. Oh, don't <laughs> talk. Are you, are you mental? <laughs> you I love the fact stupid. That, that didn't make it into monkey news. I know, yeah. Uh, they, well, that's a bit sad though. We don't like to bring, they bring bought the feature down. Yeah. But and anyway. how long was this? Into. It got hairier. They're born hairy! No, <laughs> They're not born like humans then develop hair, cause they go, hold on, we better ch we better get the chimp stuff kicking in now, cause we're in the jungle! School photograph, do I like, hang on a minute. <laughs> it looks a bit weird. <laughs> oh, you are just the, mad, the, the rubbish. Mad, innit? it? Mad, innit? it? <laughs> mad, innit? it? Imagine, oh god. But just anyway. imagine if he was in charge, we did put him in charge of the country. Go on. Talking about this the other day. Yeah. Um, oh, what was it now? <laughs> it's, listen, the fella, no, listen. Alright, alright, he's got it now. Go on, go on. This fella goes yeah. to the doctors, yeah. right? Oh, right, okay. Right, if this isn't any way apocryphal, stupid, illogical, impossible, right, you are never, ever speaking again on radio. So make sure this is at least possible. I, I'll tell you what, I'll even give you improbable, but possible. So if anything that breaks the laws of the universe or logic, okay, that's all you have to avoid. On you go. Right. So this fella, right, he goes to the doctors because he's got earache. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. If a chimp's living in his brain, <laughs> that he go gives, on. Go on. So he's got earache. He's sat in the waiting room and it's all his ears all bunged up and it's hurting a lot and what have you. So the doctor comes out and he goes, right, and because his ears all bunged up, he doesn't hear it that well, right. So he thinks it must have been me. Right? So he wanders in. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Anyway. I'm, you, I'm gonna hate this. I can just feel it in my bones. Steve, I'm gonna <laughs> let you take over. Okay, let's so, go on, let's hear it. Come so on. Okay. the doctor says, uh, sit yourself down there, right? So he sits himself down, he goes, uh, right, uh, take your, pa take your pants off, right? <laughs> so he's thinking, that's a bit odd. Anyway, he, uh. He heard that though. He, <laughs> he, he, uh, apparently he took his, his tackle off. The doctor, like, did some operation. What, there in the waiting room? <laughs> no, in his office. In his office, yeah. What? Um, wait, wait, so, so he, so he removed what? His genitals? Yeah. In, in his office. Why, 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 Carl? Why, Carl? Because he hadn't called him in. Oh, he's calling the bloke who wanted his testicles <laughs> taken off, and he didn't do it. You f- you- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What? So, so the doctor went out, 
and said, Mr. Uh, Jones, who's here to <laughs> me to whip off your cock and balls, just here and now, <laughs> right? Bloke comes in, didn't it? It must have been me. So the bloke with the- we wanted his balls taken off didn't say, oh, I think he said me. So he- so he didn't interrupt then. So the bloke goes in, he starts taking his testicles off and he doesn't say, I'm here for me ears. Down. New Year's Eve I taught him something, right, about, uh, dead people. No. You know what, the things that taught me, I was saying you're talking shite. He says they found out your soul weighs an ounce. <laughs> your soul? Yeah. Your soul weighs an ounce. Right, who, who found this out? I read it. Your arsehole weighs an ounce. Yeah. There's no such thing as a soul weighs an ounce. You're talking to devil. All right. <laughs> Have you got any monkey news? Um, so what do they do? They 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 measure they they weighed someone who was alive and they were waiting for you to die. Then weigh you again. There was oh, someone. There was someone. Now you've lost an ounce. Yeah, I'm sorry. It must be your soul shooting off to heaven. It was someone who was really ill, and yeah. they said we can't do anything for you here, but we've got a bit of a idea that we want to do. We've been waiting <laughs> for years. Stuck him on some scales. He said, right, you weigh nine pounds and an ounce or whatever, because yeah. he was wasting away. <laughs> he died. Nine pounds. <laughs> right. Fine. Well, that's proof if proof we needed. Talking uh, shite. Monkey news, we might as well leave it. Now come on, no, come, come on, on, tell monkey news. No, there's, it, it's nothing, uh, that great, really. Is it worth playing the jingle? Quickly? Go on then. Oh, chimpanzee that, monkey news! Right, it's about a monkey. 2004, four, 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 four. It's about this, this woman monkey who was born in 1834. <laughs> right? Half monkey, half woman. No. Not true. It happened, apparently it was Impossible. in the- It was in the Daily Mail. Right? <laughs> okay. The Victorian ape woman was her name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, I christened uh, this, uh, thing a Victorian Ape Woman. Well, we thought Sandra. No, I'm calling it Victorian Ape Woman. She was about four foot. No, didn't happen. She had lovely thick black hair on her head and on the back of her legs <laughs> and her arms. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alright. Save so stockings. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, and she didn't need a bustle because of her huge ape-like ass sticking <laughs> out the back of her dress. She was good at reading and sewing. Um, well, they, the well, it was good because they didn't have opposable thumbs. So, uh, uh, she could speak three languages. Yes. She, uh, was human, monkey, and monkey human. Twenty offers of marriage. Does that annoy you, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> um, ah, absolute twaddle. All right, well, like more rubbish than your soul weighing an ounce. Let's leave A it Victorian there. monkey let's woman. Leave it there, then. See you next week with some more twaddle. I was worried we wouldn't have the old magic in 2004, oh, but we're still talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> Merry New Year. <laughs> Bollocks.